Can substances that make you feel good help you with mental health? Well, it depends on how you use them. Simply feeling good, well, that doesn't have tons of value in this particular case, unless you use the better feeling as a way to face some of those demons, as a way to challenge yourself, to improve yourself, and work on the things that are the root causes of why you feel so poor. So using substances to feel good, it depends why you're using those substances, and it depends on what you use with those good feelings. So where are you going? Are we going this? straight mother? I am. Yeah, well, yeah. Where are you yeah. going with this? Cannabinoids. Oh, yeah. dude. Right. I, I know. I should check good angle before we yeah, start. Yeah, yeah. No. Like, <laughs> like, where's this guy going with this? No, like, you know what it is. You know what I thought it was because I know you just did your uh, NDMA thing or whatever. Wow, <laughs> you said it wrong. What is it? MDR. Oh, NDR. I, I didn't do MDMA. All these, are, these acronyms, dude. <laughs> that that you did your thing. Fun, you know what I'm saying? You did your laser thing or what is it? What's it? What do they do? What? what do they do? You're just holding magnets. <laughs> Laser? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's holding wow. magnets. I picture lasers. Why? I don't know. Finding his inner child. I see you like a. Like a booth, and they're just hitting me with So, lasers. yeah, okay. You didn't the yeah. first time because this is the second time you've Hold done Hold on, this. back oh, up. Okay, for a wait, second. get to the commercial. Back sorry. up for a second. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Stay focused on the fit tip. Look, here's the deal. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, the, okay, this is true for lots of different uh, substances, even pharmaceuticals. There are things you can take that will alleviate the symptoms or the, the physical feelings of anxiety or physical feelings of feeling down or less energized. And it, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But if there's a deeper problem, you can use that improved sense of well-being as a way to face those types of things. So this is how, for example, uh, they find the most success with um, pharmaceuticals for things like depression and anxiety. Yeah. So you could take substances that are very powerful at alleviating the physical symptoms of anxiety. But if you never really work on the root cause you kind of cover it up and then eventually it starts to pop out in different ways or the medication stops working or you need more <clears throat> type of deal. So why am I saying this? Okay. Cannabinoids, uh, excluding THC. So excluding the, the cannabinoid that's still illegal and, and federally that you can find in marijuana. It's psychoactive. The, the other cannabinoids, CBD, CBN, CBC, and all the others that you find in the hemp plant have been shown to alleviate symptoms of anxiety. They can produce some mild feelings of euphoria, uh, lowered inflammation. Inflammation, by the way, can cause things like depression. So having a systemically inflamed state just generally can make you feel uh, you know, depressed um, and less motivated. So you could use these cannabinoids to feel better, but uh, I caution people and like to explain to people like, okay, now that you feel better, what are you going to do with that? Right. So now that you feel better, can you go in and deal with some of these issues, some of these challenges? So like, okay, yes. So you're I, not anchored to the feeling of the substance that the substance provides. Right, right? because yeah. then it can become even a dysfunctional relationship with that. So right. like, I'm always anxious. I'm always anxious. And it's hard to work on being anxious when you're anxious. That's a very difficult thing to do. But let's say you take uh, hemp oil. So you use like the, the, the company we work with is Ned. You use their hemp oil. Like, oh my God, my anxiety feels a lot better. Okay, now you can go, because you feel better, it feels safe, let me look at why I'm anxious all the time. Like, what is going on there? What is causing this anxiety? Maybe you're just overwhelmed. Maybe your plate is too full. Maybe there's things you want to tell your partner or your friends that you're just holding inside. Maybe you hate your job. You just don't want to face it. Whatever, right? I'm just throwing a bunch of stuff out there. But if you use it in that way, boy, can it be uh, effective. So, yes, you do feel better. Generally speaking, um, uh, regard for a lot of different reasons when you use cannabinoids, but they can become exceptionally powerful when you use them. And then with that good feeling, use that good feeling to help deal with the root issue. Yeah, I would think too, like if you use that and then you get that better feeling in that relaxed state, like to also enhance that by going through like some meditative practice and like totally. some breathing drills and, you know, things like that. Maybe walking out in nature or something to kind of get you outside of your normal spinning sort of like I have to uh, sort of assess my everyday stress and, and like what I'm doing and what I constantly have to do later on and to just get out of that off that wheel for a bit and just focus on um, being present and all that is way better. Yeah, totally. So now. Not to shit on your commercial angle, but is wow. didn't the um, didn't we have a study recently come out that uh, that for anxiety it's like fifty fifty now it's like up in the air because it's it's been known that that you know, cannabis has been a, a, a tool that people have used THC so it's T but not CBD 
No, I thought I thought I thought it was CBD. No, I generally, I no, generally speaking. Uh, now, nah, of course, this isn't going to be for everybody. So I'm sure there's going to be some people out there that um, that it may make them not feel as good or feel worse. But that makes sense to me now. That you but say THC it. for sure, right? Because yeah. THC is psychoactive, and if you're yeah. if you're anxious, uh, getting high and paranoid, which I've been in that state. Before. I mean, I could feel calm, and yeah. THC can make me anxious. Right. That's right. my. That yeah. was my point, and I thought that that was so. It was just. It's just THC. It's not CBD. That right. study that came in out. In fact, uh, consistent use of THC increases the. I mean, now they're showing relatively conclusively. There's lots of stu- there's a few studies now that show this can increase your risk of mental uh, disorders and even psychosis. So, THC not as benign. As uh, we might have thought, I feel like. Do you, I mean, did you, I don't think any of us in here ever thought that. Like, I mean, it's, it's everybody a, knows a guy that went crazy because he had too much weed. So. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. and it's a it's a psychoactive drug, so of course it would yeah. it would mess with psychosis. I, you would think that that's yeah, kind of an yeah. obvious potential side effect, like anything else. If you um, abuse yeah. abuse, I've it. seen very addictive behavior around THC for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Some of my yeah. Friends, but so. now CBD and the other cannabinoids have actually been shown to offset some of that. So they'll find that like uh, cannabis that's high in, tea, in uh, CBD or high in the other. So what happens with the cannabinoid content of marijuana is if you increase one, then you'll decrease the others. It's not like you can increase one and keep the others a certain level. There's like a total amount of cannabinoids that a plant will have. So, but what they found in studies were, was that plants, and we're talking about cannabis now. We're not talking about hemp, hemp oil or hemp, which is legal. With cannabis, cannabis that is uh, has a balanced, a more balanced cannabinoid profile, far less likely to cause that. So it's really the concentration of THC you know, you, in I, relation to the other cannabinoids. I've shared before on the podcast yeah. that this is this was one of the the best tips that you gave me personally, uh, being an you know open that I've been a cannabis user for quite some time. Um, I've had these times where I get the side effects of insomnia or I get too high and I don't like the way I feel. I don't get good sleep. Um, and one of the best, or I get headaches sometimes if I had too much, uh, simply pairing that with uh, high CBD has always yeah. done well. Where, and now, I mean, this was even before, but you were giving me this advice before we were working with Ned. Mm-hmm. And I used to take gummies or just a pure CBD yeah. ones. And then, because I've, you know, I like, and by the way, I'm not advocating for people to smoke cannabis. It's just I openly admit that that's how I consume it many of the times. So what I would do is I would smoke it and then I would go and have that, the CBD edible. This mm-hmm. was before Ned, where now I just take some, I take a dropper full of that with it. And it, it almost always makes sure I have a, a much smoother night of sleep. It yes. does, even if I kind of tip, tip over a little too much of having more than I need to, because I have my amount that I'm like, okay, that's all I need. And then I have, there's times where like, oh, I have a little bit more. And then there's times where I tip over and I have the yeah. adverse effect. Yeah. To, just to give you, like to use another analogy, um, Let's say you have a lot of anxiety. Anxiety can be crippling, by the way, especially if it's kind of chronic. What I mean by crippling is it could make you freeze. So you're too anxious to do a lo- like a lot of things, especially things that will help you with your anxiety. So, and I, I look, you guys have all had clients like this where they get so anxious that they don't, it's hard for them to exercise. Even though movement is one of the best things they could do, they're stuck in their chair. They're stuck on the couch or stuck doing what they're doing, ruminating or thinking about whatever, and and they just can't get they can't get the energy or enough of the anxiety to go away to actually get up and do the thing that'll help them. So like with with Ned for example, so the reason why this came up is I got a DM from someone, and they said that. So do you guys remember I brought up that study that said that people who use CBD or cannabinoids uh, and work out report uh, improved um, pleasure from the workout or they liked it more, right? right. They liked yeah, it more. Yeah. Okay. So I got a DM from someone and this person said, that was crazy study you brought up. I have crippling anxiety. I get, I get so anxious. It's really tough for me to, to do things. And sometimes I, and I know movement makes me feel better. I know going for a walk or doing yoga or lifting weights makes me feel better. But if I'm in that anxious state, I it's so hard for me to just do something. I end up sticking to the couch or frozen. Yeah. So this person, she said, uh, I got Ned based off what you said. I use it. And what happened is it brought my anxiety down enough to where I could go for a walk and go exercise. And then the exercise really yeah. hmm. made a big difference. So I thought, wow, this is, yeah, this is great. I should communicate this. And it's, and this is, again, this is, if you look at all the literature with uh, even medications, the substance alleviates some of the physical feelings but the real, the, the most effective way to use that is then to take that, 
better space that you're in and then face the things that you need to face to kind of, you know, address the root cause. It's interesting you're bringing this up too, because I mean, this is all the legal way to kind of go about it and stuff that's like readily available uh, to see what's on the market now in terms of therapies with like psychoactive type drugs. Like yeah. even like Ibogaine is, there's a whole treatment for that, for yeah. like drug uh, addiction. Um, and there's obviously psilocybin, you know, there's like ketamine now, and there's like all these like different types of therapies and MDMA using, uh, some of these like scheduled drugs, but uh, to be able to, the work with it, obviously in the That's therapy is. is like, it's, uh, it, you can't have one without the other. Yeah. Do you know how it's weird? Because uh, uh, part of the reason you brought up the EMDR thing that I'm doing, it's not, it's not MDMA with lasers. <laughs> That's a rave. Adam. Which, sounds, <laughs> which by the way, sounds way cooler. That's way more fun than what I did. <laughs> I was about to sign up until he told me what it really was. I was yeah. like, I want to try that. Can you, can MDMA you, uh, with lasers. <laughs> can, you, can you describe for us the, the setting? Is it, the, you know, is she uh, Skyping? Is she in person with you? Yeah, in person. So she's in person, yeah. sitting across at a table. Yep. Are you in an isolated room? Yeah, yeah. Is it like an like a light is on you and it's dark? It's just a normal room. Okay, so yeah. normal room, normal weird. lighting. Yeah. There's like no, what do you picture? <laughs> I, so I'm trying to. You, you haven't you haven't painted the picture for me right now. So it's is it normal, like, a, like an interrogation? No, or is it more yeah, like how would you got that probes help? all over him? How would that like, help? All right, Sal, we're gonna yeah. have you go into some deep yeah. shit. Here's a spotlight on your yeah. face. <laughs> it's an interrogation. Well, so then are you like comfortable? you like laying out? Like it's more like therapy like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're sitting in a normal office. You're okay. comfortable. You're, yeah, I'm talking to, you know. Is it in her office or at your house? Her, her, her office. Okay, so it's at her office. Yeah, and there's different ways to do it. So there's I've seen people do it where they they tap their shoulders. Um, there's, there's different ways to do it. Some people use their eyes. What she has is she has these two little um, handles that you hold, and each one will buzz independently. So and what it does is it activates the right and left hemisphere of the brain and it grounds you. And apparently the theory is it tells the brain that it's safe to go into feelings or thoughts or experiences that you have created blocks that prevent you from going into. So because just like you said with the psychedelic therapies, which do the same thing, you feel safe enough to go into them. Now you can process them. So are you, um, while you're going through this, I know it's only the second time right now, are you getting the sense that even when this is all done, that you are now going to have these new tools on how to access that maybe without the actual therapy? Totally. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's profound. Oh, that's cool. It takes a, uh, I mean, I've only done two, so I'm speaking from personal experience. I'm sure it's different from person to person, but uh, the first one was heavy and I did not feel right. You seem much lighter, by the way. This, this was one. light. Yeah, this, you, you, you seem that way. Yeah, Your energy this, this, on the last one, I really, I was like concerned for you. I feel like, God, he really like- <laughs> yeah. Pull out like, is he going to be here next week? Like yeah, the time. yeah, yeah. Or this one, I feel like you're yeah. light. You're, 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 like when you want to yeah, put your yeah, hand yeah, on your yeah. buddy's hey guys, shoulder. Like, hey, guys, dude. I quit the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Gonna, yeah, I'm going to go live on the beach It's not your fault. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I yeah. feel like that's what you yeah, say, right? Yeah, 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 not your fault. I'm going to Matt Damon you. Justin's so afraid of crying if he did something like that. It's like, no. Run. No, this one was light. It was very light. But it's weird. It's weird how like things will pop up and ideas and thoughts and then – with this one, it was more about making connections. You ever have like a, so I don't know how to explain this without getting, per, so I'm not going to get personal, but let's I say. Know, damn, I really want to hear this. No, no. I want the audience to know that we don't even get to know. This guy hasn't shared any of this stuff that yeah. is going on. I've shared some of the stuff with you guys. No, you haven't. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. what it is you're working on. Oh, okay. Well, I'll tell you guys off air, but okay. it's, it, there's nothing crazy. People are probably watching like, what happened to Sal? Jesus Christ. Did he get, like, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're going to create our own stories. No, yeah. I just look, <laughs> I, I have a, uh, there, that, uh, there's a certain respect that I have for uh, myself and there's certain things that I just don't. You know, I'm not going to you know talk about on a show to make a part of entertainment or whatever. So that's, you know, whatever. But nonetheless, uh, the best way I can explain it, you guys ever have an experience where you know something? You're like, you know, I do this for that reason or this person is like that mm -hmm. for this. So you know it in your head, mm -hmm. but you don't know it. Like you don't really like know it. And then something happens. You have an experience, uh, you know, maybe you have this deep conversation. I don't know. Maybe you smoke a joint. And then it's like, it hits you like, like this really powerful, like realization, like, holy cow. Like I really yeah. get that now. Like it hasn't really sunk in until. Yes. The, yes. That the, happened. That intervention. Yeah. That happens. Yeah. That happens quite a bit when you do something like this. Hmm. And what's weird is I didn't know you, you, you often don't know, you might have a direction, but you don't know where you're going to go. And then just things keep 
popping up, which is pretty interesting. Do they seem to all be attached to mm. like some deep childhood thing or some things even like uh, adolescent? And, I mean, I've only like, done it twice, but okay. so far, yeah, for me. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. But so uh, this is based now off of my reading on the internet. Again, I am far from an expert on this. So this is just a dude telling you his experience and what he read, you know, on, you know, Google. six pages of, yeah, uh, on the internet. But, you know, in some cases, people will have lapses in memory. This is what people with severe trauma, this is not me. So I don't have severe trauma, but, um, there's a lot of people who do and they'll have complete lapses of memory and they'll say, I don't remember yeah, yeah. before the age of 10 or I don't remember like between 10 and 13. Like, I, I like, have stuff like that. Your, I have like years that are like black. Okay. Yeah. 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 The brain <clears throat> does that or the body does that to protect you. It was so for whatever reason, overwhelming, painful, challenging that it just cut it out. You yeah. just don't even, it's not even accessible. Mm. So EMDR is, is a way that could get you to go in and access that period of time. And that can be very unnerving for some people, but you're talking about, I was reading research on it and like a, like one or two sessions of EMDR in one of these studies was more effective than years of talk therapy for oh. PTSD. Now, what is your, years. what is the evolutionary oh. theory on the, why the brain would intentionally prune that? Well, it's got to keep you alive. You're, you're, you're this is, so the idea is like, okay, something traumatic happened in your life. So let's take it back to like forever ago. Right. So, you know, almost attacked by a lion. That's super scary and stuff like that. When you're on, like maybe scavenging for food or something, you almost died. If you were to dwell on that, that would keep you from potentially going out and hunting for food again. You wouldn't be able to so you need to like black it out, pretend like as if it didn't happen. In extreme, so. so in extreme cases, in very extreme cases, let's say somebody is abused, um, you know, multiple times as a child, like severely abused, they can, the brain will literally, in some cases, create an alternative person that that's happening to, mm. that they are separate from. It used to be called multiple personality mm -hmm, disorder, mm -hmm. uh, but now they call it like extreme disassociative something disorder, where it didn't happen to me. So now I can function in everyday life. And it doesn't mean, you know, your body's not designed, your brain's not designed to make you great and well, it's designed to make you be able to move and function and procreate. So you're going to be dysfunctional, but you're not dead. Is, is basically I wonder how many people lose their superpower when they uncover some of this stuff. You gain more. You think so? Absolutely. Do you think always? Hundred percent. Hmm. Uh, one hundred. One hundred. I mean, I think. I think one hundred percent. You definitely become a healthier, better version of yourself. But well, I, don't you think that some like super athletes and super high performers, a part of what is made them so great at what they do is they're they they've been running their whole life from something that is buried deep within, and you and much of that has resulted in their success and or their pursuit of being great well, at something. Well, let me put it to you this way. I don't know if I would call it a superpower. <clears throat> if let's say for whatever reason you had this trauma as a kid and now you have to keep trying to earn more money and be make more money because somehow that's tied to your sense of value or or you know maybe people will like me and so you keep doing that and then let's say you process it all and you're like I don't I am a, somebody that is worth being loved I, I don't need to keep doing that so I don't need to keep chasing that money is that worse I said that I feel like it's better I think it was torture what the person was doing before they had more money but is that success yeah no and that, I think that's what I mean by that yeah. right so and that's what I mean by losing their superpower is that their superpower that the rest of us would perceive right so like maybe the, like sure like I think they would 100% be a healthier person internally probably healthier to have let go of that right but from the outside looking in and I use the analogy yeah. of like an athlete right think of like a Tiger Woods who was like dad was like militant and was trying sure. to get his approval his whole life you know what he goes through something like this and then now he just stops golfing that's an interesting care. right yeah that's an interesting uh perception because it's like marilyn Monroe is a good example you know superpower of being so beautiful right that's to everybody else to her plus including her trauma it was a it was a terrible curse yeah well and she and she suffered for it so yeah we might on the outside be like yay i love tiger woods yeah. This has been feeding me so much to watch this guy do this, but he might be fucked uh, right. because of it. So. Yeah, well, I think too with the athletes, especially, is that is <clears throat> as an example, like that might be their fuel that got them there, right? Yeah, like, like they they wanted to overcome. They had this chip on their shoulder and all that, but like to then come in, actually heal and and become, uh, I guess, like 
more potential of like who you could be and like uh, operate on a different system. There's going to be a learning curve to that for them. But if they do kind of operate in a different system, I would think that either it's going to ma- accelerate your potential or uh, yeah, you might just abandon it. I would think you would abandon it. That was, I mean, and then I guess it's com- completely my opinion and my own experiences of being around, you know, celebrities, athletes, people like that. I think most of them are tortured. Well, I think most of them are, I think most of us have a a really uh, different uh, understanding of what's really going on inside many of them. Much of them that are, especially the level today, sports today, Compared to sports 50 years ago, you know, athletes 50 years ago still had a full time yeah. job and a family, yeah. and like sports was like very, but the way they're, they're celebrated, they're paid now. If you want to be great, you got to start at such a young age and and literally yeah. sacrifice most of your childhood and and young adulthood to be this super athlete most people that do that are either running yeah. from something tortured from something else like that there's there's the, they're, they're they're driven by pain yeah, yes right. most so, most athletes i know are, are driven now, by pain extend that though cuz you said most athletes i'm i would say most people yeah okay because uh, because fair. look look yeah. around the world this is not hard for people to do. People watching, listening right now. Look around at the world, and if you sit down and you're calm from an objective point of view, so much of the stuff we do is crazy. It makes no sense, some of the stuff that we do, to ourselves, to yeah. our bodies, to our kids, to each other, to other countries. You look at it and you go, why can't we just operate differently? Why? Because all of us operate, most of us operate from this particular place. Yeah. The other side of it is, one of the defense mechanisms, which I also learned, and I'm not to saying this is you, Adam, but you did bring you brought this up, so it's actually really interesting. Mm-hmm. One of the defense mechanisms for somebody not wanting to face their demons is, am I going to be, am I going to still be yeah, me. this great I'm person? I'm going to be different. Yeah. Am I still going to be able to do the things? Am I still going to be like married to my wife? Well, imagine, am I still going to have the same friends? Imagine like, the fear, mm-hmm. their fear, right? their mm-hmm. fear is going to be this because there, there's the the opposite that is uh, uh, like you can. You, I agree with you. Most everybody is operating from this place, yeah. right? From these insecurities, traumas, things like that. And and there tends to be a, a, a very clear split of which one are you? Did you take that trauma, fuel it to yeah. become this, you know, super athlete, high performing CEO, great, whatever? Or did you go the victim route and go poor me yeah. and then you abuse drugs, yeah. you don't do PTG shit with your life? Or PTSD. So yeah. and yeah. and the crazy part is like so if you're that one who used it for high performance, you go like, I mean, I don't want the other side. And so the truth is like it's somewhere in the middle is where you want to be is like recognizing you have this, you've used it to make a make yourself a better version of yourself, but you haven't drank so much of your Kool-Aid that you well, continue to double and triple down on it. Okay, it depends how you define uh, success. If it's just money, sure. No, no, no. We don't just know. That's why we use... Or sports or or something like that. But let me ask you guys this. I mean, you could... Okay, so... Well, let, well, let, let me ask you this question. Uh, ha, honest to God, be honest about this. How many people have you met in your entire life that you can actually say, just from knowing them, we could say, man, that person is... They're pretty special. They're pretty balanced. They're, they're, pretty, they're pretty good. Like, they're they're... I've only known a few yeah, a handful. Uh, maybe, some of them, ha- some of them were successful uh, based off of money and their jobs. Some yeah. of them were just average, whatever, but I've known very few people where I, you know, and you know, these people, you meet them, you hang out with them and you go like, okay, I'll use one that's well known. Arthur Brooks is this, one of these people. Like you meet Arthur Brooks and you talk to him. Now he also happens to be successful in the, uh, the traditional sense, right? With business and all that stuff. But you meet and you sit with the guy and you get the sense that he's a very balanced. Oh, you feel the energy. Awesome. You can feel just it. know his ego. He's not egotistical. <clears throat> he's not like this insecure. I feel that way about you guys. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I, I do. I appreciate that. I do. Yeah, thank you. I yeah. do. No, yeah. I, I really do. And not and that doesn't mean like any, uh, uh, by any means, think uh, everyone in here is perfect with that stuff. No. But I think they're self-aware enough to uh, recognize their their insecurities or the things that have driven them and have at least a good relationship with it, which that's where I'm going with this is like, you know, there, there, there is aware of it. I think would be a, yeah, Yeah, there's gotta be, there's gotta be some power in, in having utilized it for some good too. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you knowing Mm -hmm. that you went through these things, 
You've overcome them. You've utilized it to. to You're coming from the everything happens for a reason standpoint. Yes. And, and use. Yeah, yeah I, the, I agree with you. Yeah, right. And, and, and fuel it that way. Now, but then also becoming aware that that is a major driver. Yeah. And then that could tip over into an unhealthy relationship yeah. with it. And that's what I mean by there has to be this kind of interesting dynamic that that totally. you uh, that you have to almost live in two in two worlds here of like I don't want to go to the op where I I let go of it so much and then I do nothing but then I it, I, it happened to me for a reason uh, can I use it for good to to fuel me to be a better version of myself but then make sure that I don't identify as that that's who I am because that thing happened to well, me. Well, you could also like, you could also turn into a self-absorbed uh, narcissist, like the, what do they call them? The spiritual, what do they call them? Spiritual narcissists or like, you know, I'm so self-righteous self. Yeah. Spiritual, yeah, you know, yeah. and I'm the whatever, and I'm so great. And I have all this, whatever. And you talk to them, you're like, you're just a narcissist in a different way, yeah. you know? So I could see it also being something like, I'm always working on me. And it's about me and my growth. And I'm, <laughs> totally. you know, what are you doing? You're not yeah. working on your growth. <laughs> yeah. I'm so growth mind, you know, that kind of stuff. Like I could see it going, yeah. it's complex, isn't it? It's yeah. Yeah. Complex. It's really interesting. But anyway, I'll recommend to anybody uh, who's, who's like growth minded. It ain't easy. It reminds me of uh, a challenging workout. You have a challenging workout. You feel sore and stiff and not great <laughs> the next day or two. But then you start to get these adaptations and you come out um, a little stronger. So now right. do they sorry, I'm so curious yeah, yeah. about this no, stuff. No, no, go. I mean, I hope the audience doesn't mind that I'm selfishly prying because yeah, yeah, we yeah. don't I get a chance to um when you when this stuff surfaces, you get it. Uh does she provide you uh also with like tools on hey, when this comes up in in life, is like whatever it is, I don't know, I'm guessing here. When you're, you know, with your partner or with your family, your parents or whatever, the stuff that triggers it. Uh, is there is there tools or things that she tells you, uh, you know, hey, when that happens, do X, Y, and Z or somewhat, but okay. it's more like this. It happens. You, you it happens automatically. It's more like this. Uh, the person who's trained knows how to guide you so that you could do that yourself. And then now this EMDR isn't like you just do EMDR. You know, then you meet with the person another day and you do normal talk therapy, or whatever. But it's more like. They, okay, so you remember, uh, you guys remember this, uh, at, at some point as a trainer or a coach, you realized how much more powerful it was to direct your client away so they can make the connections themselves versus tell them yes. the connection. Yeah. Totally. Like, if you do this, you're going to feel this way. Right. Not as effective like as evolution you career. finding out yourself. Yeah, well, they're like, yeah. oh my God, I, 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 you know, I could sleep better now. When they make that realization versus you telling them, you're going to sleep better, mm. it's way more powerful. It's kind of like that. Like, a really good you know, practitioner knows how to guide you. At least that's what it feels like that, that way you can kind of make those, uh, those connections. Um, and is, is, uh, Jessica doing this too, or just you? She did it before me. Oh, she did it before you. Yeah. She did it before me. Oh, I didn't like yeah. a long time ago or like recently. No, she did a long time ago. She did oh. some recently too. Um, I guess I could talk about this, you know, I'm sure she'll be okay with me saying this. So she, we had a really traumatic birth with Aurelius. I talked a little bit on the show, but I don't really go into full details. Really, really, traumatic uh, experience, terrible experience at the hospital, um, really tough for her. After that, whenever he would cry, it would trigger this PTSD response with her. Part of it, and it's a long story, I'm not gonna go into it, but part of it was when when she got a C-section that she pulled him out, the doctors were checking him out, he was screaming, she just wanted to hold him, and it, cre plus everything else that happened leading up to that, there was a lot more, um, kind of was part of this. So every time he'd cry, she'd get this like, visceral physical reaction mm. she did like one or two emdr sessions solved wow yeah wow. Solved. Wow. now she gets a normal reaction when babies cry everybody gets a reaction sure. Sure. nobody likes yeah. the sound of a baby's cry. you're human but but what she had before far better from one or two of these sessions so she's done interesting it. Cool. Yeah. wow so she's done well, it before so she knew about it even before that though That's yes. what oh wow yes. cool. you know what happened to me was this is how i explained it it feels like i've had sunglasses on this whole time and now i took them off Everything seems a little bit brighter. I don't mean literally like I see more colors, but rather I feel everything. That's that lasers MDA, MDA there. <laughs> lasers, man. Because that's what that feels like. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Colors I, no, as better. soon as I, I, I just feel more, I just feel more things. So which means I feel more happiness too, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Which mm. I, I was afraid of at first because I don't want to feel the other shit. I don't like feeling sad. I don't like feeling bad. But if you blunt that, you blunt everything. So now I feel a little bit more. A bit brighter, more vibrant. Everything's a little more vibrant, okay. a little okay. bit more bright. Uh, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, it's kind of cool.
Today's giveaway, Maps Anabolic Advanced. Here's how you can win that program. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you do all of those things and if you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We're also running a sale right now. Our pro mobility, anti-pain, correctional exercise programs are all on sale. Maps Prime, Maps Prime Pro, and the Prime Bundle that's already discounted, which combines both of them, you can take an additional 50% off. So if you're interested in this promotion, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Anyway, speaking of, uh, of crazy stuff, um, I want to talk about an organization that I want you guys to do this with me. Let's just examine, let's talk about their goal and let's talk about how terrible of a job they're doing at achieving their goal. <laughs> like whoever, whoever's in charge of PETA oh, you said Bud Light. <laughs> is an idiot. Oh, Bud Light's fuck. Oh, we can get there. Yeah. Whoever's in charge of PETA is dumb. They're dumb. Because if, PETA, what happened? if PETA's goal is to convert regular people into animal lovers and protectors, they're yeah. they're stupid. They're, is that their goal? Like, because it, it seems like yeah, they've just gone completely in the extreme. What am I missing? I miss well, something. I'll tell you what I they, miss, I'll tell you a post that they did. You know what I mean? You know, they, they, more and more, right? Throughout the years, they do stuff, and you're like, what in the hell? So I feel like they're just talking to each other now. Listen to this post that they did on Facebook. So this is from PETA. If you wouldn't give your kid a cigar, you shouldn't give them meat. <laughs> That's straight, out of the, that's, straight out, that's straight out of the what the hell what? stupid documentary. They're pulling just out so of the they're, similar. They're, they're pulling from the same. They pull from the same. Stupid Giving thing. your kid a piece of meat is like throwing a cigar in his mouth. Like, what are you doing, bro? You're only talking to the extreme animal rights, you know, people. Like, you're not going to convert anybody. If anything, you're turn people away with stupid yeah. stuff like that. That's so dumb. What a dumb statement. They yeah. say stupid shit. Like you know, all the time I, now. I don't know if I, I. We have a lot of dumb people. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of dumb people. Way more. You know, every time I think that, like, there's there's way more than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> this is a lot. No, I'm serious. Like, we just, we're so easily manipulated. And I think that's such a great example yeah. of, like, that's how dumb so many of us are. Like, somebody could do that. And then someone's like, really? It's that bad? No. They'll do, like, one Google search, find something that confirms that bias. And then now they're like, oh, my God, I can't give my kid meat anymore. It says, I may as well give him cigars. Like, yeah. that's how crazy, like, we are. I feel like there's a lot of people that fall for the the first thing that they read or see online today it's just a weird it, it's to me. dumb and along those lines i'm going to try and pull this up because uh max lugavere posted about it on um his here uh, let's see here it is okay this just came out which i think is amazing so the united nations food and agricultural organization obviously they're looking at the whole world okay and they make recommendations on nutrition for the whole world and to my surprise, they actually came out and said, meat, eggs, and milk are uh, very important for the world, especially for children trying to hit their nutrient uh, needs. So we need to promote the consumption of meat, eggs, and milk to people. I thought that was, and, and the reason why I'm surprised yeah, is because it feels like there's been propaganda and, and politics on the other side pushing kind of baloney. They're only saying that because real soon here you'll be able to grow it in a lab. That's why. Oh, They're setting up. the table, bro. Oh, They're setting it. the table. Yeah. Dude. By the way. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear on the all-in guys saying that, that, you, that that's becoming a thing you can't say anymore? Lab-grown meat? Why? Uh, there, there's like some, like, look, could you look that up for me, Doug? Like uh, the negative connotations yeah. around lab saying lab grown meat that's become like a. We don't want to give people that. Didn't you catch that? The way they, they started the I saw that, but the, were they were saying Arr. something else? No, they were referring to like that's like a, like a don't say that anymore because it's technically not that or it has some sort of like negative connotations to it. So it's like you, you're weird. To, yeah, yeah. So maybe Doug can find something. Well, with GMOs, a lot of people don't know this. With GMOs, this was a brilliant. Um, on this, on this, from the side of the GMO companies, um, when they created genetically modified corn, uh, because it was genetically modified, they they could patent it. Okay, however, patented products need to be labeled typically as such, uh, but they 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 also wanted it to not be labeled GMO. So that way, when you bought it, it didn't say GMO corn; it just said corn. It actually went all the way to the Supreme Court, and the winning vote was from a ex Monsanto employee who was a you know a judge. So that allowed GMOs to to really permeate the market because when GMOs first came out, I guarantee you, 
consumers would have been more hesitant if they looked at products and said, wait a minute, what is right. this? Right, if you're G- comparing them apples to apples. And yeah, like this is genetically store. modified, no well, thanks. Did, there, isn't there, yeah. what, what country is it that actually makes that a big deal? There's a country that Italy, like, I think is, is it a, Italy? Yeah, I think they make a big like, deal. Like right out the it. gates, it was like a big yeah. deal. Like you had to have like a ma- big lo- logo on that yeah, that really yeah. draws attention. Like, so not saying that they're bad or good, whatever, just that's, you know, they know if it's labeled differently, people are going to be more hesitant. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe they know that Saying lab grown meat will make people not want to buy it, and so they're trying. That's to That's what I that. think. That's that, that was what. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure exactly the context which uh, All In was talking about it, but it sounds like, for example, in Missouri, they're actually prohibiting the use of meat as the what you can call it if it's not coming from an animal. So that oh. I don't know if that's the case. I mean, there's all kinds of names for those: lab grown so- meat, cultured meat, cell based meat. Clean meat, they call it clean. Hey, meat. how funny is that? Well, that Look at all the different sense. names they come up with, so it sounds bad. But they all clean have meat? meat in the name, and Missouri <laughs> says no, you can't do that. Yeah, maybe they'll spell meat differently. Yeah, M E E T meat. Yeah. Well, the way that uh, Freeberg Freeberg was talking about how meat. they're how they're they're doing it is really fascinating. Like it's like you basically you take the cells from from real meat, and then we can replicate that, mm-hmm. and then continue to, and then you grow it on uh, bacteria or so on you, like clone um, it, and then. Uh, yeah, grow it in, in Petri dish. And, and from what it sounds, I mean, from, the from the way he describes yeah. it to me, where this is different than like GMO foods or things like that, is that it will, it you won't, if you were to put both of them in a lab and no, test the them, it would be the same. It's the same cells. Yeah. Only That's difference kinda, is one of them had a soul. So yeah. One did not. I mean, so what, any any crazy predictions on like what, do you think that this is going to be like a new frontier is like we, we find out, wow, there's so, there's still some, Eating even meat. though they're exactly the same, we're, we're getting for some reason different responses when it gets digested or in the body or so, like, cause there's, there's, we know, zombies, we know a we're lot, right? We do know a lot, but, but we, we don't, don't know everything. We don't know everything. And so do you think this will uncover something else that we potentially don't know, or at least uncover that wow there's more to this than just the cells and the i would imagine yes but off right now i don't see what it could possibly be because it's still cells i know right it's still cells so mm-hmm. maybe it would be different because well, th- what it wasn't said, exposed you, you, to sunlight or yeah but even then you could replicate how I know, that I would don't know. how that would you know modulate the cells or change it's things it's never like, flexed before yeah, yeah. Uh, i don't there's know there's environmental factors i'm sure that uh, I, I, it goes through that we don't even account for. I mean, again, you know, though, like, if it's being, if it's 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 a it's a clone, a carbon copy cell on a cellular level, all those all those things, the sunlight, the grazing, the reflecting, it. the movie. I got it for you. The okay. soul one is the best. one. Is like this yeah. thing doesn't have something about it, which is a little. You know, that makes it kind of sound terrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, zombie meat. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like what uh, if you okay, and if you are what you eat, right? At, at a certain point, if you're eating all of this sort of grown meat that hasn't actually lived like wh- what kind of person well you see they'll say it is alive right because it sells i mean so say okay that. i got it i got it <laughs> there always are say that there are epigenetic changes and things that happen to the body of animals and, and people through experience and through life so if the experience and the life of this meat is just in a laboratory I would imagine there has to be differences that we have yet to understand how to measure. So I would imagine. That reminds me, isn't that commercial exactly. that our milk comes from happy cows? Yeah. yeah uh, that's, that's, I know. So, so we don't get that experience anymore. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. You know, happy cows make more milk, don't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Didn't I you mean, have to go and like. Well, yeah. No, if you're, if, uh, an, an, if an animal has been uh, sick, injured, stressed, I mean, it absolutely Did you affects. have to go in and like when you used to milk and like pet them a little oh, bit? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I play certain music for them. You call them by the name, you rub them a certain way. What music was you the most massage effective? Them. Country. No, country, like, dude, I like country music. I mean, yeah. it's they definitely don't like Justin for the stuff, farm. Bro. Like four o'clock in the morning, <laughs> you cannot play Pantera, dude. Fucking cows do not like. Get up, get up. Yeah, yeah, they don't like that. Milk drives right yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. They're like yeah. you know, Shania Twain is. You know what I'm saying? They want to Really? Yeah, yeah. And it was there speakers Head in buddy. the whole. The yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, you would you would walk in and just turn it up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would, but blast it because you also wouldn't want it like obnoxiously loud to where. They have, the, they have the the humming of the machines going with some light country music in the background and wow. good massaging and how would you massage oh, them? You like you know you you rub their udders and you rub their side and they're you know the and, udder yeah, yeah. wow mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. crazy well they so the, the the cow if a cow is stressed it won't even release the milk so the, can I, you tell in the udder oh yeah you but, can see it mm. so like like it's uh, like a shriveled udder. 
Yeah. Wow. Could, not like so much that the average person could tell. I could but tell because I've, I've seen it so much. Wow. So you can see it. It's like it's and then and then when it drops down. So when you you dip their their teats in iodine and the iodine, if there's something well, in it. Well, that's to keep it uh, clean. Well, that's to keep, but it, it doesn't just do that. Like the, the process of doing that settles them down and then they they re and about a minute later they release Is it like a bowl of iodine or do you have like a little it, so it's a, these little these little cups that are that then that, then you you squeeze the cup and it and it sucks up the iodine in there and then you dip 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 and then you and then you make your rounds and then by the time you come back around they're ready you, to go they're ready to go Wow. Unless something's like wrong with them. Easter eggs. And that's how you always know like something potentially is going on. Like, and so we would, so the, all the cows have numbers, right? So let's say I did all the normal process and I come back and for some reason this cow was not like, I would, I would write that down. 412 today was off. And so then the, the, the farmer knows to go and check on 412. And many times you find out, oh, they had some gut issue going on or they're, hmm. they weren't eating very much that day or something's wrong with them. Now, when you milk the, the, the teat, do you just like, I no, imagine it, you just start at the top and squeeze it down? No, it's not that it like, there's, like there's a technique. I was just going to say. Like if you took someone who's never done it before, like I feel like you're just they'll, they'll sit there and do this and they can't get me out. And then you'll walk over and go. They'll just jerk it off. It ain't going to work. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, so yeah. what do you do? You got to. It's like a, it's a, it's like so weird, right? So I, I you, 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 you roll it through your, your fingers and then squeeze at the bottom like that. So boom, it comes yeah, out. Yeah, then it comes out. That's so crazy. Wow. Speaking of how music affects you, which is, thank you for that transition. I got you. Um, yeah, so there was this concert in LA and it was with like the Philharmonic or whatever. It's like this. I saw this. Dude, okay, so they're playing Tchaikovsky and, and um, I guess like the, the vibe was really, people were getting into it, it especially this one lady. Okay, so this this they got to the crescendo. It's kind of like building up suspension, and then they hear audibly this lady really enjoying the music. Oh, I and it got that. more louder, more audible. She was literally having an orgasm in the audience. Yeah. Uh, you can watch to it. the music, and she's just oh, like going, and and everybody at the end is just like clapping, yeah. and like That's applauding. So awesome. She had an orgasm. Yeah, Go and ahead. it was loud. Yeah, it was a loud orgasm. Yeah. You can hear it. To there's there's like, okay. videos of it, yeah. like the, the orchestra's playing. And you hear her, oh, and it's going off. Dude. I mean, I mean, imagine you, if he was alive. So, what do you like, think? Do you yes, think there's a, a bit of that, or like her playing into that, and like her wanting that type of attention, like or that? Because don't you feel like if you know that? So you, she's like, she's or maybe kinda, like her husband was like, you know, she had one of those like things on her, and he was like <laughs> playing on his like <laughs> uh, app. Just well, you remember when? Uh, I I remember when we first started looking, like before I knew who Wim Hof was, and started. Like we did like a deep dive yeah. on him well before we interviewed him and stuff like that. I remember uh, people like saying that just from the breathing techniques oh, yeah. that, that they would have orgasms. What do you mean? Hold on a second. You guys have right. had a client do a corgasm, right? Have you guys ever had that? Corgasm? Corgasm. No, I didn't teach that. I mean, <laughs> no, you didn't have to <laughs> teach it. That's, those are the dark so arts, sounds, sounds like <laughs> So phase one, phase one, we're going to work on I wasn't stability. Sick, I, I know you're lying, train. bro. Phase two, I we're going to move you're into lying. the you corgasm. Had, you never had a female client huh? say- I mean, I've heard no, audible noises that, that sounded like Inside orgasms, but I'm like, I don't- I just thought they're playing Top into trainer. it. Yeah, this, Top there's, trainer. A reader, there's a reason. Why don't you that. buy ten more sessions? You just bought ten. <laughs> no, no, no. You never had a female client say, "Whoa, this." You know, where, you know, after you train for a while, they're comfortable with you. Like this one makes me feel kind of like when I do this exercise. That's happened before. Was she looking at your eyes? No, whole time, come on, bro. You guys, I told you guys have told me off air. I mean, no, I don't think so. I mean, Not like that. Anyway, it's they, a real thing. Look it up. Yeah. Orgasm. I, I do know it's a real because thing, of though, the pelvic floor that. muscles yeah. and the core. Right, it's like when Kegels, they're activated right? doing yes yeah, certain exercises, yeah. it can actually trigger what feels like it's going to. I'd happen. like to get a survey going with how them. built up do you have to be for that to be this. like that? You like that's like got to be a huge sign. Like oh, you are not getting it enough at home. No, sure. actually, that's false. I think wow. if you're not getting enough, it could be harder. There it oh, is, right you there. Think so? Here it is. Ooh. Expanded orgasms, exercise induced orgasm, most Ooh. often reached through core workouts. They spread to your lower belly and legs. They feel very different from a vaginal orgasm and are more similar to a clitoral orgasm. Wow. God, girls are so lucky. Man, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know yeah. our next, next MAPS program. Yeah, we're going to write the dark dark arts MAPS program. <laughs> Every time my wife and I have sex, I think about that. I'm like, God, you get like 15 of these things. I get one. No, like, hey, yeah, right? just, yeah. Adam, Adam's pretend you know, story, but it's actually a brag. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> keeps getting like a thousand orgasms. You know, my, 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 my wife's so exhausted because like, I give her work like 85 when orgasms. When is it my turn? <laughs> <laughs> you know, meanwhile, it takes me a I'm long so time. tired. Because I can go forever. You know what I mean, guys? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, 
<laughs> but anyway, that's, that's a real thing, dude. Yeah. That's a, so yeah, so if you if there, there's there's muscles that could cause it, there's that there's a part of the brain that's close to the part of the brain that that, that controls orgasms. Apparently, it's similar to sneezing. So there's been people who've who've had oh, like a brain injury I or head trauma, yeah. and then they sneeze and have an orgasm. Can you time. sneeze with your eyes open? No, your eyes will come out of your head. That's what I heard. No, I'm just mm. kidding. But you can't. I don't think you can. Yeah, yeah. No. I don't think you can either. No. I'm going to try it next time. Just I, I, I have like, <laughs> like <a psycho. laughs> Yeah, I've heard it's impossible to sneeze in your sleep, too. So that's, <clears throat> that's another thing. That would be weird. That's so weird. Have bro. you ever seen that happen? It never happened. Sneeze in your sleep? Yeah, somebody sneezes in their sleep. It mm. doesn't happen, dude. No, I think I've sneezed in my sleep. I think no. I've woke myself up from sneezing. No I think so, yeah. I'll ask Katrina. She would okay. know better than I would. <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh, are but you- stay on the music thing. Hold oh, on sorry. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, sorry. Because uh, there was a little fun fact. This is a tiny fact. Uh, real tiny because it's a, a termite. Um, and so, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. Uh, so termites, basically their productivity, they did like some weird- messed up study where they played rock music when they're like working and everything and it doubled their work capacity. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Termites are working? They work harder. What do they do for Two work? times harder. They chew up they things. They chew things and oh, they build things and then they, yeah. yeah. Okay. What do you think not, so I'm thinking, making yeah. shoes? What, you think they're, what do you mean? You, I, I, you consider that work? They're like, oh, the termites are at work today. For them? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Adam's like, they made little computers for them? Yeah. 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 So yeah, so that I'm so like rock that music it, works. It works, wow. and, and I and I experience this. So if it works for termites, you know maybe we should experiment. You chew on wood. Yeah. Did you ever? Uh, you guys ever seen those studies on spiders when they give them different drugs in the spider webs that they make? Have yeah. Seen these? Oh yeah. It's, Have you seen those? It's hilarious. They'll be like a normal spider, uh, like a normal spider, and it'll make a web. Like meth, like, it's all over the place. Yeah. They're like a spider on caffeine, a spider on meth, a spider on no LSD, a yeah. spider on weed. Oh, on weed, it's like just that. barely it's like, like lazy as No way. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Doug, show yeah. me this. That, Effects that's... of psychedelics on spider webs. Yes. Or, or there you go. See those pictures right there? Does it have the, does it have Oh, the yeah. Label? Caffeine, normal, normal. marijuana. Oh, yeah. my God. Pull yeah. it up. Let me see. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Super lazy when they're on marijuana. <laughs> Look, you can't even complete it. Yeah. <laughs> he started off well. Yeah. 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 Then he went to go eat something. And caffeine's all disjointed. Yeah. Caffeine is actually disjointed. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Yeah. What's the, what's the bottom one? What is that? Uh, Chloral hydrate. What is that? What is I, that? I have no idea. I don't know. Doesn't I mean, like a, does anybody have problems experimenting on insects? Right? Yeah, <laughs> no. Peta, where are you at? You they know, don't like, care. About, they they're never ugly. care. They don't, they don't care. care about insects. Yeah. I've never ugly. seen that before. That's hip, super hip, critical. Funny. Isn't that weird? It is weird. Yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, affects them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. This was in 1948. Wow. Oh, wow. Can we do this again? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I was like a, my own like scientist uh, yeah. growing up with spiders, especially. Speaking of animals that with. work, you know what animals trip me out? Mm. Beavers. Isn't that weird? They build like dams and shit. Like they actually know how to make them with their tails. Like, I don't find that that fascinating. You don't think that's weird? No, not really. Really? You really think that's really that like- I mean, I've never seen them in real life, so I've just seen cartoons. Maybe they don't really- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it's accurate. Is it like, is that yeah, like that? It's... Hey, are you following, sorry to the hard transition here, but I wanted to ask you, yeah. uh, it, are you following what's going on? You know, the Fed just moved up another 25 basis Good points. God. Are, are you, uh, yeah, what, are, what, are, bank, what is your family saying? Because like, your family's so- Oh, they're talking they, about banks going down. I, yeah, sorry, that Adam. is a concern. That's, I don't want to hear you, Doug. Doug mm -hmm. over here, like Mr. Silver. And gold. <laughs> Look, this guy's got to build a house Guns out of and gold. gold by now. He's That's like a, leper He's yeah. a leprechaun. <laughs> I was like, Doug, we should invest in houses. He's like, fuck that. I'm going to build a house yeah, out of silver yeah. and gold. This yeah. is. I'm going to live underground. <laughs> He's got a pot of gold at home. <laughs> he is like a leprechaun, dude. <laughs> All right. So, no, there. Uh, what bank was it that just uh, got hammered? Another it, bank got hammered. It was. Um, uh, SPC? No, no, no. no uh, the before. first uh, federal or something uh, like not that? SVC. It was SB, uh, SF, S, oh man, whatever. Uh, P, uh, but another one got hit. I know first that. Republic? Mm. Boy, we're terrible. There's so many of them. I mean, it's hard to keep They're track now. They're terrible. I'm going through I all my- I can't even help you out. So I, you know, I'm talking to my buddy Chris. I think <laughs> Chris like, comes- What's a bank? Next week will be Banks. great because I know we have Chris coming in next week, so we'll be able to chat with him. I know that he's like just been- stress the fuck out and you know what he tells me is so stressful is less about like the interest rates of that but it's the reaction mm. so here's the bank the, that and so he's like, like I, when i talk to him he's more angry about the uh the the way they're reporting about it sure because uh, the, the articles like just like you guys are saying yeah, you right don't now, want people running you got everybody and... all alarmist that these banks are going to collapse yeah and so the the, the run on the banks is what's scariest out. like than, than anything else everyone's like the the books oh, are Pac fun. west 
Oh, it was Pac West. Pac West, yeah. That was different than what I thought. Hmm. Yeah, Pac West. That must getting, be another one. They're they're getting hammered. It is another one. <laughs> yeah, they're getting hammered. They're going down, dude. It, every time they do this, they're making it so that the banks, however they operated, becomes uh, makes them insolvent. They can't do it anymore. It's and mainly all the regional it, banks, right? This these aren't happening to any big major banks. Not, no, not yet. See, sometimes, I, yeah, but sometimes I feel like that it's it won't. It's like they're in cahoots, right? Like mm. the big banks just taking out their competition. Totally, I know. That's crazy. Mm. So what, go back to what, what is your family saying? I'm always curious about that. They, so they think that, that there's going to be this collapse. What are they doing then? Well, they're, where they, where's their money tied up? Uh, that's a good question. A lot of them are shorting some of these banks. So they're making money on the way down. Um, but they're, I mean, they're all saying, look, what they're doing right now is stupid. What they need to do is <clears throat> cut government spending dramatically um, rather than doing what they're doing, which is they're trying to hammer growth by creating more um, unemployment and by basically they're trying to literally, I mean, they admitted it, right? They said that they're trying to crush the economy to control inflation. That's, that's what they said. So, and there's going to be constant, there's going to be, I like casualties. that website. You know what? Yeah. Put that down as our, our, uh, Doug, you, have you ever, so I, this is where I get a lot of my information. What? Uh, the Norda. Norada. Uh, Norada. Mm -hmm. Is it Nor or Norada? Um, yeah, there's a name in there. Yeah, reference that for our plug today because when I talk a lot about real estate stuff like that, I love the articles mm. that they have in here. Dude, I got I got to I gotta tell you guys a fun story. I was driving the other day, and uh, this <clears throat> dude, uh, they still exist, right? People who take cars that are a little older, smaller, and they modify the shit out of them mm -hmm. just so they can race people. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm driving right, and I was, you know, I was punching it a little bit, kind of having fun, and in front of me was like a 19. It was probably like looked like a 96. BMW 3 Series, but it it looked like it was maxed to shit. Like, you could tell, right? Like, right. it was just... And I kind of pull up behind him, and then I go next to him, and then he takes off. I'm like, oh, this dude wants to race a little bit, right? So then we hit a stoplight. I look over, Asian dude, really cool guy. He smiles at me, and he kind of gives me the head nod. I'm like, all right, let's do this, right? So we take off the light, and, um, you know, I, I, I was a little ahead of him, but this dude stood was, like, right next to me, which you got to be pretty fast to be able to do that. So then we raced on a rolling start. I don't know what he had in this car. Bro. <laughs> it was small, but he must have had it. I heard this thing must have had 500 plus horsepower in it in this oh, tiny little. Oh, and uh, he was, I mean. Did he get you? Yeah. No, he didn't. Oh, but he could stay with me. Which was impressive in itself. Very impressive. Really yeah. cool guy, too. He was all tatted up, dude. And he was just kind of, you know. And then, as, as, <laughs> then I, when I had to turn or whatever, you know, he kind of. Head nod. Yeah, yeah. Head nod, wave or whatever. Like, all right. Did he what have is gloves it? like Adam? We broke yeah, does that, yeah, if you did nah, that, that, that level. No. That, that's, I scare people. They go, they pull up the stop like that. I pull up your glove. <laughs> Put those shades down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this guy's a dork. <laughs> Do you remember what? when you were younger and you would race somebody? It was like you you couldn't smile at them. Like, oh man. yeah, no, it was all serious. Now when you're older, like this is fun. Why do we got to hate each other? Yeah, it's no, it time. it is that. Like you can just be like, hey, yeah, the head nod, yeah. little peace sign. No, when you're a kid, yeah. you're like, mm, yeah, we should probably fuck. fight. Later. Do girls ever do that? Do you know any girls that do that? Race? Yeah, no, never, huh? No. What is it about us that like? Why is we're it just, stupid? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's I was looking for a better answer. I mean, it's pure dumbness. I'm sure they exist. There's zero reason for us to do that. You know, circling back to the. The economy talk the, a little bit. To the collapse. The, the, yeah. Well, the, you know the part. <laughs> to, to the, the part that is really. So I'm on the other end, right? So you you talk to more of the 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 banking and and investor side with your family and stuff like that. I'm constantly talking to all of our real estate agents and and brokers and stuff like that on that side. And you know the freaking housing market is not. It's not tanking like it should be. It, it got it got hit a little bit. It, it. Not only that, but it's like it there it trended up. A, a lot of our properties are starting to go back up again. Which is crazy. Weird. It's so, so weird to me. And they're real we, assets. Maybe. I mean, you're right. I mean, that's, 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 and because there still isn't a over, over, gold, over, oversupply, we're still <laughs> considered undersupplied. Yeah. And even though they're through the roof, even though interest rates, I saw an article the other day about uh, somebody with 740 credit what their mortgage would have been just, you know, two or three oh, years. Oh, wait, hold on a it? second. Did you guys see that? With that the new- you have a credit score above 740? Yes. You have you to pay that, an right? extra fee to subsidize the mortgages you for know people that? with shitty credit. I heard that. So yeah. it makes sense for us to ruin our credit a little yeah. bit. What a weird You're going to punish people that are doing the right thing? It's weird. so fucked. And you know why it's messed up? Here's why it's messed up. It's all up. an equity play, bro. Y yes. You know, so, how, this is how so stupid dumb. people are. Okay. You're right. Remember we said earlier people are stupid? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here you this go. is part of that. Whole this is why it's so stupid. People are like, oh, rich people should pay more. 
There's a lot of not rich people who did a good job yeah. Yeah. with high with good credit scores. My parents were immigrants. They had no money. They had great credit because they were responsible. They never mm. defaulted on anything. And they didn't buy things they couldn't afford. So you're going to hammer people with good credit. You're not hammering ha ha rich people or whatever. You're literally just everybody that's doing what they're supposed to. You're going to make them pay for the shit butts that Dude, do what they're not supposed to. You provide opportunities everywhere you can. If people decide to not take advantage and, and be shitty about it, that's their problem. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, Doug, Google uh, example of 740 credit mortgage right now with new, like something like it's that. Another, it's another, it's another like $1,500 fee or Bro, something. It was, like a, it was, it was a crazy difference and it was really, uh, I think it's just a fee though. I don't think it's the actual rate. It's what? a fee. You pay an extra fee. No, you get your rate is 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 worse. The rate too. Yes, your rate is. So worse. every month you're paying. Yes, more? every month. Are it's you not, sure? Yeah, oh yeah, I'm so sure. So this is compared to somebody with a lesser score, or just no? Do back? this instead, Doug. Say uh, people with set with 740 credit score more pays more for mortgages. That's it, and then you'll get the right article. Uh, I think it's just an extra fee, bro. I'm I, I, no. I'm, I'm not positive, but I think that's what it is. I don't think what? it's a, like you have to pay. Here it is. Scores between 720 will pay more under the new rule. For example, someone with a 740 score puts 5% down would see an increase of about $1,500. I biggest think that's the fee, though. No, dude. This is like $1,500 like for the year. That's how that would be. Oh, my God. Yes, bro. It's monthly. That's it's even not, worse than I thought. Yes, it's terrible. Unreal. Wow. Mm -hmm. Whose so, idea so, was this? You know what might be a like, smart idea, then? Let's Gosh. say your credit score is at like 750. Oh, no. Tank it on purpose. Tank it a little bit. Like buy That's a so weird though. Like get a like subscription to like uh, Alhambra water and then don't pay it for a few months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll lower your credit score for a second. Yeah. You know, yeah. don't pay your yeah, your your membership fee or something like that. I don't know. It's just why it's wild to me that in in the, that's weird uh, with all this going on that with the no banks, sense. all the fears of that. It, Doug's point is right, right? It's a, it's an asset. So like people are like, what does that say, Doug? Is, is, is that it? Yeah. So basically, it's saying that uh, people with higher credit scores will start paying higher mortgage fees, while those with lower credit scores will pay less. It makes a lot of sense. That makes actually. it's so stupid. That doesn't make any sense. By the way, the reason yeah, why it, people well, it, on, it, okay, I, so it does make sense for the banks. By the way, this is so the banks can give more loans out to people with lesser credit and incentivize those people. And, and that's the whole idea of this. Yeah. By the way, by the way, okay, real quick. Here's why this is a terrible idea all the way around. First off. You're punishing people who are responsible, not rich, just responsible people. Number two, you're going to give loans to people who probably shouldn't be getting them in the first place. Okay. Mm -hmm. The reason why you pay more for fees or the reason why you don't get a loan and your credit score is low is because the risk is too high. So what's going to happen is we're going to have more people get loans who shouldn't get them, which means that the odds of default is much higher, which means we could have another 2008 in the We've future. We've seen this before. Well, so my theory right. on it is that that's, they're doing that, but they I think they've already calculated where their sweet spot is. Like, let's move in that direction, but let's not go as extreme as we did before. Not these nagams and no no doc type of like loans. Yeah, let's so, just predict it because they're good at that, right? I mean, that's yeah. that's where I think they're moving, though, is trying to go in that direction so they can get all these so, subprime loans. Here's the tinfoil hat. So we got to put those on real quick. Uh, I'm hearing more and more people say that the goal, the purpose of all this insanity is to literally destroy the paper dollar because they're going to make it so that the banks collapse, so that paper money is worthless, major crisis, here we go, everybody. We're going to save you by introducing this digital dollar. And then the enticing part is going to be we're going to wipe out debt for all these people over here and everyone's going to jump aboard. That's that's the the, the conspiracy theory. That Dude, I how about. mad would you be if that they I do that and you too. didn't go rack up a bunch of debt before? That's the case. We're going out by yeah, punishing those people who are careful. Well, what happens when inflation runs rampant or dollars collapse is is something like that, where where you think that the cost of something is going to be twice as much tomorrow. Mm. And what happens is people go out and buy everything they possibly can today. Yeah, because they're like, I better get this TV, I better get this car, I better get everything I can because tomorrow it's going to be so much more expensive. And then that just makes it happen even faster. Well, I mean, that's the Peter Schiff's theory is that we're going to be like, uh, he's talking like Venezuela. Yeah. yeah great depression. Crazy. Wow. Like worse than great depression and stuff like that, that we're just again, continuing to keep, but I mean, that guy's been crying, you know, depression for 30 years now. Yeah. So my, has it been 30? I don't know, it's been a long time. He's yeah. Been, yeah. He's been saying it for at least 20. I think is he's been at damn. some point he might be right. Yeah. It's yeah. just scary. Crazy. Anyway, yeah. uh, let's talk about Caldera. 
for a second. We're can we? Mention. Did you ask if we could talk about the new state? Yeah, thing? yeah, we're good. Oh, to we go. can't talk about the new thing. We're good to go. They got soap, bro. Pull, pull it up. What? Yes, up. I love it too. I've been using it for over oh, a month have? now. I haven't been able to talk about it because they hadn't released it yet. So, is it what's so good about it? The thing that you, that doesn't matter. What? It smells great. No, it does no. smell great. But the thing that doesn't matter is what I like most about it. Ironically. Right. What does it? It matter? lathers like better than any soap bar I've ever oh, had in my life. <laughs> really? Yes. It lathers better. So you get than, a nice thick foamy. It lathers better than any soap bar I've too. ever used in my life. He does and use a loofah, he's, and it he's smells great. Guy. And hundred percent does. It's a big bar for like like I hate like when you get soap. Like I'm I'm not even halfway through my bar. I've had it for over a month. I've been using it. So you, you know when you get a bar of soap and it's like the, they it just dissolves. Like that's sometimes. Oh, when well you, you get, leave it and, it and it by the time you get taken in the shower. It's yeah. So here's it. Uh, there's always like a, a there's always a, a takeaway for things that are natural and stuff like that. It's like you you get something that's better for your skin and natural. Then you go and use it and the shit like three washes turns away to like dissolves because yeah, it's yeah. all natural. It doesn't have all these weird Breaks preservatives and, and yeah. chemicals in it to, to yeah. sustain it longer. But this thing actually, it's a big bar. It lasts a long Does time. Does it dry your skin? It or smells. No? no, it's great on my skin. What's the name? What are the ingredients Doug? Does it say? Yeah. So it has coffee oil. I mean, just a, their little mm. pitch on this is it's a remarkably rich lather that it won't dry out your skin. It's, and, and so, so, uh, so it's like a thick foam. You know, sometimes it doesn't, even, are, it doesn't even come. I've never had huh. a bar of soap even come close to lathering like this. Really? Yes. Okay. Well, that's experience, right? That's a good experience. Oh, I'm so glad we could finally talk about it. All I, right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I straight up, um, when we worked with Dr. Squatch, I, I really liked their stuff. I know we still have some of their stuff at some of our other properties. I know you guys, I think, still use some of their mm -hmm. stuff. So I've been waiting for a brand that have, I've, we've, I've liked as much as that, just straight up. We haven't found someone. And the fact that Caldera came out with a bar of soap, I was like, oh, hell yes, please let this be good. Dope. And it's- Badass. All right. Okay. All right. Cool. I'm in. All right. You do smell good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, shout out today. Did if you didn't have one? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, you I thought you were gonna shout out that page. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out that uh, the the is it considered a blog? What is it considered? I, that website? I don't know. It's it, it's n o r d r a. No. N o r a d a. Real estate dot com. Yeah. It's an acronym. What does it stand for? Oh boy, I don't know. Oh yeah, it's an acronym. I'm pretty sure. But. uh Really, so when you're when you're doing homework on the, the economy and real estate and stuff like that, one of the one of the hardest things is to parse out all the biased opinions yeah. that are people are saying things, and then you find out like, oh, that well, they represent this, uh, you know, a mortgage company, yeah, or yeah, oh, yeah, they yeah. and so so their their way of presenting the information seems very biased. Where that's one of the most unbiased uh, cool. pieces of content, and and I actually don't know a lot of why or where it comes from or who produces it. But uh, over my last few years of really diving deep in the real estate side, it's where I end up pulling a lot of, of good, good, I think, unbiased content from. Excellent. Yep. Check this out. There's few things that have been proven to help you sleep and to improve the quality of your sleep, but some things actually work. Not a lot of things, but there are some things. Many of those ingredients are in the new product from Sleep Breakthrough. So Sleep Breakthrough has a pre-bed drink that combines the power of magnesium with other natural ingredients like valerian root to help you fall asleep, stay asleep longer, and wake up feeling refreshed. Pretty cool stuff. Go check them out. Go to sleepbreakthrough.com forward slash mind pump. Then use the promo code mindpump10 for a discount. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is James from Tennessee. James, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, man. Great. Good to hear it. I uh, just want to give you a quick plug um, for the MAPS uh, Prime Bundle. Uh, I was a martial artist training to mix martial arts for most of my teens and 20s. Uh, in between, you know, practices and, and training camps and sparring and competition, uh, had a lot of wear and tear and mileage on my body for someone my age um, and kind of had just accepted that, you know, pain in my knees and hips and my shoulders was just going to be a part of my life. Um, but started listening to you guys and, and heard you guys, you know, kind of talking about priming and gave that programming a try. And it, it took a while. It was about eight or nine months of really uh, consistently integrating that into my daily routine, um, but really hitting the zone one and zone three movements uh, every single day for about eight or nine months. And, uh, you know, I'm joint pain free most nights and most mornings and my mobility is as good as it's ever been. So awesome. Good. I really couldn't you, recommend that more. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great to hear. Um, as for my question, I'm assuming you guys can see it or maybe you've seen it already. Um, so I'm not going to read it verbatim, but really I was hoping you guys might share some of, uh, you know, the factors that you guys consider when you're, you know, trying to decide if you should stay focused on your current 
fitness and health goals, or maybe if it's time to scale back or change directions. Um, I've always kind of benefited from being, you know, pretty meticulous and, and strategic in the way I set goals and, you know, set a plan of action for tackling those goals. Um, but I've listened to you guys recently talking a lot about being flexible and, you know, trying to adapt your, your training to your life circumstances. And that's kind of made me reflect a little bit. And I've been, you know, kind of thinking that there are times when I, you know, think I get tunnel vision on what I'm trying to accomplish and, and might be ignoring or, or not recognizing you know, some of those internal and external cues that, you know, maybe what I'm doing isn't optimal, or maybe in some cases, uh, even, you know, harmful. Um, so I was hoping you guys might share some of the factors that you guys kind of weigh in that decision making process, and maybe, you know, how often you guys kind of revisit that decision making process. And, you know, just what that looks like for you all oh, uh, in general. Good question. So, mm -hmm. so there's two, uh, I'll answer generally, but then I'll answer something more specific to you. So generally, if somebody were to ask me that, I would say, and this is what I try to do for myself. There's a few things I look at. One is what do I enjoy doing? Because there's value in that, right? Um, how does my body feel? There's value in that. And then are there signs that my body is telling me that I need to change gears because uh, this may not be so good for me? Things like joint pain, inflammation, movement issues, signs of overtraining, something like that. So that's kind of an extension of the, of the second one, right? Like what is my body telling me? But the first one's important too, which is, what I like to do because, you know, there, there's value in doing something that you enjoy. Now, to be more specific to you, based off of what you said, you, you, you trained and competed as a mixed martial artist for a long time. I'm assuming the reason why you're asking this question is because you're having a tough time transitioning from competitor to coach or teacher or not necessarily training like a competitor because training uh, as, a, a, as a competitor in mixed martial arts you, 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 sometimes, oftentimes, I should say, you ignore your body. You have to. You're, you're going to fight. You know, I don't know anybody that ever goes into a match that has zero injuries or zero pain. It's almost never happens. So you, you've trained that way for so long. It's probably hard for you to kind of figure that out now. If as you're maybe starting to transition into something a little bit different, am I hitting the nail on the head? Is, is this kind of what's happening for you? Yeah, so that was tricky at first. I transitioned to coaching pre-pandemic, so kind of stepped away from competition, um, went to grad school and kind of realized that, you know, repeated brain trauma probably isn't good for a, a career path. <laughs> I'm trying to use my brain. So I always kind of enjoyed the coaching side of it more anyhow. Um, it's less physically taxing, probably more emotionally taxing, but, you know, I really enjoyed that challenge and it was still competitive and I was still, you know, competing with my students. Uh, so it was actually a lot of fun to see if what I was teaching was working because they'd, you know, start kicking my butt. Um, so that transition was difficult, but I was able to maintain some of that competition just within the practice room, but then also seeing if what I was working, you know, as a coach was was working in, in the room for my students. Um, at When the pandemic hit, you know, I kind of, that forced my hand a little bit to, to switch gears a little bit. And then I actually just recently relocated with my family uh, for my career. So I'm living in Knoxville, Tennessee now, away from my gym and all that. So that's actually been a pretty hard transition for me, not having that kind of outlet. So I'm not coaching anymore and I'm not training in that way anymore. I still, you know, am a martial artist, still practice that craft, um, especially on my, you know, more rest days and, and recuperative days. Um, but I've had a kind of transition into, okay, now I'm just going to focus on strength and mobility work. Um, I never really had the luxury of strength training. So I've actually really enjoyed um you know, that process, I was competing at 135. So I was walking around at 155, which, you know, is a pretty brutal weight cut, but meant I couldn't really ever afford to put on too much more muscle mass. Um, and now, you know, I've, I've put on 30 pounds, mostly the, the right way. Uh, so I've enjoyed that challenge. Um, really, I, I think the physical signs of the last thing I noticed, and I, I think that's kind of, you're hitting that. Um, I, I don't really know if I'm a good gauge of what is too much stress or a good gauge of what you know pain actually is because I've got a pretty high threshold for those things. So it's usually like when my body, I think Adam refers to as like your body revolting on you. Um, it's usually when that happens. When I wake up one morning, they're shooting pain up my side and then I kind of reflect on it. I'm like, oh yeah, and I've kind of been okay. a jerk to my kid and not really communicating well with my wife. And you know, like it's starting to like hit okay. me that, oh, maybe a lot has been going on and I just kind of had my blinders on and, and didn't really pay attention to those signals. Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. You've developed a relationship with good awareness, uh, by yeah, the way. exercise mm -hmm. and pain that served you well for a long time. But now it's tough because you're like you said, and a lot of people might not understand this, but um, when you're, when you train at that level, your relationship to pain has to change 
but then later on, it's hard for you to gauge what's appropriate because you you just you perceive it differently. It, it, it means something different to you than to the average person. So my advice to someone like you would be to follow a structured program until you re you you re rewire or change that relationship. Because if I tell you to listen to your body, what's probably going to happen is you're probably going to always slowly veer towards overdoing it. Like you're mm -hmm. going to kind of just push yourself to because because based off of how you that relationship you have with exercise and pain, that's going to feel like comfortable. It's like home for you. So I'm going to tell you follow a structured program. Um, for a while until you kind of change that relationship. I think the perfect program for someone like you is math performance. I think you'll love it. It's the perfect combination of strength, mobility, athleticism. Yeah. I think it's going to give you everything that you're looking for. And it allows you to be in the gym, you know, five days a week. Maintain that functional skill yeah, and totally. strength so you can get back into, weave back into martial arts and kind of move your body at that high of a level still, but also get the benefits of all the strength training and uh, go through that. I think that's a great recommendation for you. I really like the, um, I don't know, what does is, what is Jason call his little triangle thing that he uses as an oh, analogy? Yeah, like I, I use that a lot longevity, now. Longevity, performance, So you have aesthetics. longevity, performance, and aesthetics, right? So if you represent, those represent a triangle. And dead center is the perfect balance. And at most times in our life, we're rarely ever dead center. We tend to move in a direction towards one more than the other. But like, it takes so, you away from the other. But it, but what you what, what I like that as a visual is as you move towards the let's say performances at the top part of the triangle. As you move towards performance in that direction, you start to move away from longevity and potentially aesthetics. And as you move towards aesthetics, you move from the other two. And so. I like that as a visual and to constantly be kind of checking in with yourself. Where are you at in that triangle in your fitness journey currently? And then being uh, honest with yourself like, oh, wow, I've been really in this performance direction for a long time. Let me choose a program or let me build a routine that's more longevity focused. And I'm going to I'm going to really shift my my training, my thought uh, process around exercise and, and taking care of myself in the longevity way. And then you go that way for a while and you realize, oh, wow, I've really moved in that direction. I've started to lose some of my performance I love so much or I like to look a little bit better. And so let me move over in that. And so I really like that as a good visual for yourself. And then to just kind of be checking back in, like where are you at in that triangle, recognizing that dead center is probably the most perfect balanced place you can be for overall health and a little bit of everything and then being honest with yourself where have i been lately knowing that i'm pulling away from the other two a little bit yeah do you have mass performance by the way james i do not i just have uh the prime bundle and then maps anabolic and i'm really just alternating basically every three months from a, a strength focus to a performance and mobility focus but my performance program is kind of just what I used to do as a mixed martial artist, which probably isn't the most healthy thing. Bro, you'll love, love you'll love mass oh, performance. Yeah. You that, will absolutely love it. It'll and that's now a perfect, yeah, great. now that's a perfect blend, which you already do. You're on the right track, what you're doing. I like what, what I hear right now. And then you add into the mix uh, maps performance and you've got a nice little rotation of training right there. Yeah, you'll like it. We'll send that to you. Follow it. Follow it. I think you're going to fall in love with the program. I appreciate that, guys. You got yep. it, man. Thanks, Thanks for James. calling in. Nice talking to you. All right. You know what I like about I learned this in, when I did jujitsu, but you know what I love about mixed martial art, uh, uh, you know, people who train that way, is you never know who could kick the shit out of you. Like yeah. he looks like a, such a I nice know. guy. You meet him on the street, ah, you're a nice guy. He kick your ass. Yeah, you know what I mean, real fast, real easy. Uh, no, you know th this. This really does highlight. I would say of all of us, you probably know this the most, Justin, because you compete at the highest level. You develop this relationship to pain mm -hmm. and challenge and physical exertion. What I mean by relationship is like you perceive it different. Then when you try and back out of that, like what everything feels like it's too easy. I just doesn't feel right. I'm right. supposed to feel pain. I'm supposed to well, beat myself up. You almost seek it out. I mean, and that's what you kind of learn to to focus on because of that mental discipline that you're applying as an athlete in a performance setting. Like you're I want to, I want to experience what's going to make me uncomfortable and, you know, and pain is part of that process. And you know, that on the other side of that is like a higher level that I can achieve. Um, but you, when you step out of that, um, and you look at it and you assess like how well it's been doing for your body, yeah. uh, that's really with the conversation <laughs> that's completely different. And for him to kind of shift it more into that conversation with himself uh, it's always challenging but it's going to be so beneficial for him going forward that's why i really like that triangle 
You know, it, it does illustrate it really. It does illustrate really clearly, it really. Right? really and, yeah. and I feel like even if you're not like a, you know, someone who programs or can write a program yourself, you can get an idea of like, you know, okay, if that's the three, the three points of the triangle, it's pretty easy to assess. Okay. Where have I been? No, mm -hmm. mostly. And if you're like, wow, actually, when I think about it, I've never really moved in those directions. So that means I'm probably at one mm -hmm. extreme or the other. And so yeah. I, I really like that as an idea for people to kind of check back with themselves and, and be honest of where have you been focused on. And, you know, the ideal place is somewhere in the middle, shift even though around you don't have yeah. to stay in the middle because you, you never really around. are in the yeah. middle. Right. Let's never. Be, yeah. You're never yeah, in there's the middle. Only one you like more than the other. Yeah. And so but trying to never be in one direction too long. And, and that's how you kind of create that healthier balance with exercise. Yeah. You know, here's another good analogy. Um, you know, the highest performance cars and competitions, Formula One and drag racing or whatever. They have to fix those cars almost Constantly. after every single yes. race. They blow something out almost every single time. Then you look at cars that last the longest on the road and they're far from the highest performance. Uh, they're far from the fastest, right? So yep. it's just like that for your body. You push your body to an extreme level with exercise. Uh, you are well beyond longevity. You are now at the point where it's not healthy, but you're performing at a high level. That can be a hard switch. I think that's what you know people like James uh, experience. Well, using that analogy, staying with that analogy, why that is is because you are used to racing a car at 170 miles an hour, so driving at 90 feels slow to you. Sure. And so, let that, alone driving at 65, which is where you're supposed to be, right? <laughs> so that's yeah. my point. It's like yeah. you're you know you're supposed to be cruising around 65, but you're so your your 65 feels like 170, and so trying to get somebody, yep. and you've trained yourself to perceive it that way for so long you have to kind of untrain yourself our next caller is Susanna from Florida Susanna what's happening how can we help you hey y'all um well first of all thank you so much for taking my question I truly trust and respect all three of you and so I appreciate you taking the time to um kind of help me see what's going on here um I also want to say that I appreciate everything you do um I've struggled with body image issues for my entire life um, and y'all have jump started my journey on overcoming those. So I really, really appreciate that. It's, it's been one of the biggest blessings. So I, I appreciate y'all and everything you do. Thank you. That's great to hear. Um, okay. So I'll, I'll get started with my question. I'm going to be reading it off from a screen, but in the big picture, I'm relatively new in my fitness journey. Um, thankfully my husband introduced me to y'all two years ago. And I've been an avid listener ever since um, and truly become a fitness fanatic. I started focusing more on strength training when I found y'all and have been following some of your pro programs on and off for like the last year and a half. Uh, in early February, I decided to hire a personal trainer um, for a few reasons. One, to help me with my technique. Uh, two, to push me. I don't think I was progressively overloading well and then also to fine tune my nutrition. So after talking with her, we decided that my goals were probably to cut down and start leaning out heading into summer. That's what I was hoping for. So in February, that was like the very, very first week of February, um, we did a body scan and it calculated that my total daily energy expenditure is about 2,300 calories. So because my goals were to cut down I was advised to eat in a 500 calorie deficit. So I did that and I've been sticking to it religiously. Um, two weeks ago, we did another scan, which would be almost two and a half months since the first one. And the results were a three pound increase in muscle mass, which I was excited about, um, a one pound loss of fat, which increased my total weight uh, two pounds, um, but there was a 0% change in body fat percentage. So a few questions based off of that. How trustworthy are these scans? Is it a reliable form of evaluation for myself? Um, can you help me make sense of what is happening versus what should be happening with what I'm doing? Um, and what is your advice moving forward with the goals that I have? What, okay, great question. Lots of good stuff here. Too. Very good. Okay, so um, how reliable are they? They're reliable to look at uh, when you're trying to ter determine trends. Mm -hmm. They're not reliable when you're trying to get an exact number of how much fat or muscle you've gained or lost 
with one test. Or technically how many calories you should be eating. Definitely not when it comes to calories. Definitely not. They're going to give you a general estimate. But boy, you know, someone your age and, you know, and, and activity level. Like I, I, I've met people whose caloric intake could be a thousand calories up or down mm -hmm. uh, depending on the individual. So the way I would like to, and the way I, I know that my, my co-hosts here like to determine someone's caloric intake is by having them track for a while and whether if they gained or lose what lost weight or stayed the same, then we'll determine what their baseline is based off of that. Okay. So not saying that this isn't a good starting point. But it's a very general <laughs> estimate, and it's not going to give you any specifics with calories. But yeah, as far as gaining and losing, what you want to do is you want to do repeated tests every two to four weeks, and then mm -hmm. notice a trend. If it's moving upward with body fat or downward after several tests, you know that, okay, the trend is showing that I'm gaining body fat or I'm losing body fat or I'm building muscle or I'm losing muscle. Now it can become more reliable. But I also like to combine it with other, other signals. Like, for example, in that period of time, how was your strength in the gym? Did it go up, down, or stay the same? It went up a lot. A lot. Okay. Then yeah. I would probably believe that you gained that mm -hmm. muscle that it says. If you saw significant strength gains, then mm -hmm. I would agree that it's probably accurate. Um, the other thing is, you, you know, your body weight went up a little bit because you, you built more muscle then, then you lost body fat, but those scans, uh, they they have a tougher time measuring, um, water weight and subtracting that from mm -hmm. lean body mass. They do to an extent, but it's, again, it can be, there can be a little bit off here or there. Um, how did your clothes fit? How did you look in the mirror Were people like your husband or people you trust saying things like, Oh my God, you look like, yeah. Cause I used to get this all the time with clients where the weight doesn't change on the scale or maybe goes up a little bit. But they'd come back to me and be like, you know what? Like four people came up to me and have said, I lost, I look like I lost 10 pounds, even though my weight hasn't changed. Were you getting any com comments like that? Or did you notice in the mirror? Oh, this looks, I'm actually looking a lot different Close than the scale. Differently, yeah. yeah. Um, I, it, this may go back to the body image issues that I have, but I wasn't loving how I was, how I'm looking in the mirror. Like, I feel like I've got a little bit, a layer of fluff that I like, I guess you call it a little layer of fluff, but my clothes were starting to fit a little bit tighter. Um, but my husband, he loves my body anyhow. So he, he obviously thinks it was, it, I look great, but it, I wasn't liking how big I was looking. Yeah. Okay. So I, I don't trust your opinion yeah. with the visual <laughs> trust. <laughs> Dude, are there people in your life that you trust that could tell you you're going in the right or the wrong direction? Right. Like if your husband's trustworthy, in the sense that he's like, man, you look healthy. Like you're looking like yeah. this is working. Then I would listen to him rather than, you know, what you may see in the mirror. And, and then if that connects to or correlates what the scan is showing, yeah. which a muscle gain plus strength gain plus mm -hmm. some fat loss or a little bit of fat loss, then I would believe that you're moving in the right direction. Do you add okay. any circumference measurements? I know sometimes that helps at least for you to see any kind of trends of size or uh, something in your arms or your legs or somewhere else or your, st mm -hmm. your stomach even that, uh, you know, you may be able to assess that a little bit better in terms of like how your body's kind of mm -hmm. shifting and transitioning uh, composition wise. But uh, two, was this a DEXA scan or was this like a bioelectric impedance? Because they're not all equal in terms of like what kind of data they're going to provide you. Like yeah. there's like three that I would even like consider like are pretty uh, consistent in terms of like the data they provide you with the BOD pod, the hydrostatic way, and then DEXA scan. But uh, other than that, I mean, I, I honestly, like the bioelectric impedance, I, I tend to like not even use that in conversation. Yeah. What did you use? It's called a Staiku. Um, Is that I'm not familiar? Did you grab handles? Did you stand on it? What did you do? Um, I stood on a rotating platform, um, and it was like a projection kind of thing coming out of. A oh, poster. okay. I know what you're talking. Look about. it up for me, Doug. Yeah, I, it might mean, be like a Dex. It's new. Yeah. It's yeah. Nonetheless, I mean, I, I I'd still default back to what kind of Sal said. I I don't care how accurate something is. I still only use that as like a gauge to give me an idea. Sure. I want to actually comment on the strategy that I would have done with you here. So for two and a half months, we put you in a calorie deficit. Even though your goal is to lean out for summer and fat loss, I actually would have increased your calories and focused on building strength and muscle first. Because you had two and a half months. And part of the reason why I think you only built a couple pounds of muscle is because probably half the time you were in a deficit. And so it's really hard for the body 
to build muscle while you're also in a caloric well, deficit. Well, she obviously did if she lost body fat too. I, well, I know, yeah. but so you so you did, which is which is exceptional. You did a great job, and the and what you're doing is probably not bad. It's just going to be a, a slower pace. I think what would have been faster for us, although it would have taken some mental discipline to do this, is. I would have liked to have tried to increase your calories for those two and a half months. And then right about now, you and I would be talking about, you'd be telling me, Adam, I put on five or six pounds. And I'm like, don't worry. We got way stronger. Most of that was muscle. Now let's cut your calories from this new calorie maintenance and let's watch you really lean out a lot faster. So that's, I, I would have yeah. done strategically. I would have, I would have probably approached this a little bit different than uh, you guys did. It doesn't mean what I'm, and I'm not. This isn't like me hating on the trainer. Or yeah, you still that, did well. Yeah, you did. You did well. You did, but it's hard for clients when it when it moves this slow. That's it's so it, you you think you're doing something wrong or bad, but when you when you do a caloric deficit like that, when your metabolism is you know only your maintenance is only around two thousand or so, you know, cutting five hundred calories. Yeah, do the math. Like you you really shouldn't expect that much body fat and that much muscle gain over that much time. It's just a slow process. And if you got the discipline to stay that course, you'll probably continue to see good results. Personally, I would have rather taken an approach where we like aggressively try and bulk and put on muscle and accept that we might add five to seven pounds. I'm not worried about that because we're building the metabolism right now and then get you to a place more like 26, 2800 calorie range, and then cut you all the way back down to say 21, 22, and watch your body really start to move uh, as far as body fat loss. Yeah, I mean, you can actually do a reverse diet now. And, you can and do a slight bulk right now and start to do okay. kind of what Adam's uh, talking about. Yeah, I, I like I, I like what Adam said a lot. I think that might be the best, uh, that would be the approach that I would take with you for my client. And then, you know, to what Justin said about circumference measurements. The reason why that's a good idea also is because your like women's clothes in particular, well, men's clothes too, but women's clothes in particular are not designed for women with muscle. Mm -hmm. So you, you might lose like size around your waist, but you built your butt and hamstrings a little bit. So now all your pants feel tighter. Oh my God, I'm getting fatter, right? You're, you may have, you may stand up a little taller now because your mid back is more developed. So now your shirts right. feel tighter around your shoulders. Oh no, I'm getting bigger. No, actually your posture changed and you're developing a little bit of side delt or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, so I like circumference measurements because, uh, you can measure and be more specific rather than based off of like, you know, Adam, Justin, or I, we go to a, a clothing store, we take a suit off the rack. Oh, I have yeah. to buy a size that's for someone who's obese mm -hmm. if for in, in order for it to fit, you know, my body. Um, but I'm obviously not obese, right? So that would be the other thing that I would say uh, to focus on. But I, I think a bulk would be great for you right now. Yeah, what I would do too is, I, so I would I would bump your calories up, you know, say uh, we were at 17 right now. So I'd probably go up to like a 22 hundred calorie or so around there stick with that for about two weeks i would it's okay to use the the body i think the thing that will really skew those is the time and day you do them and if you're fed and water in you mm -hmm. so if if you use those things be very consistent about the time of day that you and so ideally i always say first thing in the morning if you can with no food no water in you stomach because that will give you the most consistency around the average. And then don't get hung up if it says I'm 35 or 24% body, but more or less, okay, we've decided now we're going to increase calories and try and build strength. Where did it go from the, the starting point? So like wherever you're at now or the last test you've taken, now let's try and increase calories, focus on mm -hmm. building strength. And then when you say you measure in two weeks, let's see what it says then. And hopefully if we did a good job, you're putting on a lot more muscle than you are body fat. And then that means we're, 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 we're right on line with, with the course. If you're not putting any muscle on or really body fat, then we probably could increase the calories even more to continue to build. Okay. If you put on more body fat than you do muscle, we added too much calories too fast. And then we come the other way. And that, that's how I would use that. Okay. I see. All right. Yep. I, I was wondering if what happened, because I was a chronic restrictor, like for the for the first 25 years of my life, I was I was wondering if I had just like shot my metabolism too much and I maybe need to focus more on rebuilding that or really building it from scratch since I kind of had messed myself up. Um, so I was wondering if if uh, I bought the reverse diet guide oh, good. and I've looked at it. Um but I didn't really have a good starting point of what even is my maintenance because I, I tracked and I felt like 
um, I was I wasn't able to really evaluate where even my starting point was. It but. sounds like you're pretty close to it right now. So I think we have a good. Yeah, enough, I, go up, I go three to five hundred up from where you're at. Mm -hmm. We have a good baseline okay. where you're at right now, and I I think your intuition is right. Uh, if yeah. you were a chronic under eater for a really long time, also keep that in mind that it, it, it's going to be, it's going to take us a little bit. It's not like a switch, right? Where you were a chronic under eater for most of your life. All of a sudden you decide you're going to start adding calories and then all of a sudden, wham, the body's going to respond beautifully. Be patient, be patient. We'll go slow, you know, hundred calories at a time, trying to increase it. Um, and then, and yeah. just keep, you know, testing every couple of weeks that you make sure we're on the right track. You're, yeah. You're young and usually someone your age there, you know, you, did you mess up your metabolism? Um, I mean, you, 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 you no, probably not. I mean, could there be some, you know, something that needs to take a while maybe, but at your age, probably not a better indicator of that would be like your hormones, your energy. Um, mm -hmm. do you get your period regularly? If you're on birth control, that can mask a lot of that and it'll be hard to tell. Yeah. But typically with a 20 something year old young woman, those are the questions I'm asking. Now, if she comes to me and says, I haven't got my period in a while. My hair is brittle. My skin and nails don't feel, I don't have good energy. I've got gut issues. Then I'd say, okay, we need to focus on, on all that stuff first, before we even look at like getting your metabolism to boost and all that stuff. Like, so if okay. any of that's resonating, but you look pretty, I don't know, you look pretty healthy. Do you have any of those issues or do you feel like eh, I'm otherwise pretty well, pretty good? I did have those issues. And then when I, when I started listening to y'all, it was particularly the why women should bulk episode. When I started listening and, and applying these things, my hair started growing more than it ever has before. I feel more energetic. I was having those like afternoon slumps where I needed some sort of caffeine and I don't need that at all anymore. Like I just, I feel the healthiest I've ever been. So what I want is to be able to look and like reveal those muscles and, you know, show off in a swimsuit, but that's like, I know those are, um, surface level goals. That's all right. Uh, so, but the fact that I feel healthy, I, like I really do feel like I'm the healthiest I've ever been. You're on, so the, I, you're I, on the right I, track. Yeah, reverse you're, diet. You're on the right track. I go you're, reverse diet. Right your now, intuition sure. is right. You're on the right track. You're doing great. Be patient with yourself. Mm -hmm. That's all. I think you're. I think you're okay. kicking ass. Right. You know what? Let's get you in the forum too, so we could check up on you. All right. I'm gonna have Doug. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna have Doug put you in, in in the forum. Keep us posted on the reverse diet. Let us know okay. how it's going. At one point, you'll probably ask us. Okay, I've been doing this for a while now. My calories are here. Is it time for me to start to lean out? We'll be able to give you some better advice if you if you keep us posted. Okay, awesome. Thank you all so much. You guys, all right. All right. thanks for calling in. Bye. Bye bye. How crazy is it? How many uh, young women were impacted by that episode? Oh, I know. It's so great to hear, dude, because it's so needed. Like, it's not a message that's out very often. No, uh, not just needed. It's just it's crazy how many young women go for so long with, you know, hurting themselves because yeah. they're eating too little because that's what they think they're supposed to do. Yeah. And yeah. thankfully we did that episode and, uh, it, re you know, it reached a certain number of people and, you know, okay, great. You got to eat more and you're stronger. But what, what I, what we keep hearing is my hair grew, mm -hmm. my skin came back, my nails started growing, my period came back. My energy, my depression was lifted. Like I love hearing that stuff. It's oh, really it's awesome. The best. Yeah, she's actually doing really good. Yeah, she is. Considering that if she was a, a chronic under eater for that long and yep. she was suffering from all those mm -hmm. things, and she's now able to say the things out of her mouth, I feel the healthiest I've ever been in my life. You know, at twenty seven years old, that's such a good sign that you're mm -hmm. moving in the right direction. The aesthetics will come. You just need to stick with that, it can, continuing down that path. That's why I think if I if she hired me in February and I asked all those questions, yep. I know nobody in here would have been like, hey, let's put you on a cut now. It's like, okay, yeah, no. you just started feeling really healthy. Yep. Let's keep actually increasing calories. Mm -hmm. Let's get strong. It out yeah, let's keep going the direction you're going. And then we'll get to a point where we can start to you know cut calories. I mean, I think that she can continue on the reverse diet and actually lean out while she does it. So do I. Sure. Yeah. Our next caller is Nick from Pennsylvania. Nick, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks for uh, taking my question. I'll get right into it. You got it. Um, I recently just finished anabolic. I'm really on maybe day four of a little bit of a, uh, a deload, just kind of focusing on mobility and moving through the, uh, the motions. Um, my main goal with anabolic was a little bit of a body recomp. I started the program at about 216 pounds. I'm five foot seven. Um, after finishing anabolic, I dropped down to 205. Uh, according to like a uh, bioelectrical impedance scale that I have, I'm at 22% body fat currently. I really have no idea what I was um, to begin with. Um, 
my main question comes into a little bit of stiffness that I've been experiencing in the low back, probably for maybe like the last five weeks. Um, strength gains were awesome throughout the entirety of the program. I think finishing up uh, phase three, you know, what I'm doing for 12 reps now is more than what I was doing from five reps at the beginning. So I definitely wow. got stronger. Wow. Um, but low back stiffness, particularly after squat days, I seem to get a really big low back pump. And then that stiffness would linger around for a handful of days um, afterwards. So I'm really just kind of thinking, you know, do I move into performance or do I kind of keep, you know, pushing on these strength gains and maybe run like strong or anabolic advanced with prime? No, I would no. go, I would go performance yeah, for symmetry. sure. For sure. Performance. Yeah. yeah. You're, what you're experiencing is just your know, bilateral, you know, yeah. same Stability. plane of motion. Yeah. You're just, you, you, this will happen when you start to kind of uh, push your body's ability, your mobility's ability to support the the, the strength gains. Mm -hmm. So performance will take care of that. So will map symmetry. Nick, have you ever uh, oh, yeah. have you ever videoed yourself doing your squat from like the side view? It'd be it'd be interested to to see if when you get down to kind of parallel, if if you tend to dip forward a little bit. A lot of times, uh, so mm -hmm. this was an issue for me before I started to address my ankle mobility is as I had hit that, as soon as I break 90, uh, my chest would kind of fall, lean forward a lot. And then that's where my low back, I, I would get, it would get so pumped and tight. I would have to between sets sometimes lay on the floor in by the squat rack and like do core exercises, pressing my, and like kind of stretching it out because it would get pumped up. And that's literally just from the, the flexion and extension in the spine uh, with that kind of load on my back. Do, have you, have you noticed that? Or does that ring a bell at all for yourself? Yeah, definitely. I've, uh, I've, mm -hmm. I've done some videotaping and I've sent it around to a couple of different buddies who are chiropractors and physical therapists. And it really seems like, you know, maybe there is a little bit of that butt wink at the bottom. I had an old knee injury that seemed to really affect my right ankle. So it is pretty stiff in that like dorsiflexion. Um, I've considered that quite a bit. And, you know, throughout the, uh, you know, the last couple of weeks of anabolic, I really kind of geared some extra mobility to kind of hip rotation and, you know, ankle flexion. I, I really think map symmetry would be your best bet to really kind of dive into that because now you're going to isolate it. Uh, if it is a one side discrepancy versus the other, yeah. uh, especially with the ankles, I think, you know, Adam's on point there with the ankle mobility, like being a factor with like going up the kinetic chain when you're squatting, you know, maybe just a stability issue from lateral stability, rotational stability. Um, and it's really going to emphasize that in that program and highlight exactly kind of where it stems from. This is also a case where where this is where I like to use these tools that we never we tell people not to use all the time or use as a crutch. You're like squat shoes could potentially help while you're working on these things. So your idea of working on your hip mobility, addressing the ankle stuff, doing symmetry adjustment, do all that stuff. Meanwhile, I may have you squat in squat shoes uh, until that wink starts to go away, and that that way we at least eliminate the the low back stiffness and pain, and you could actually still squat through a good deep range of motion. Obviously, the goal is to get to a place where you comfortably could barefoot squat deep like that, but that's also a process, and during that process of working on the ankle mobility, hip mobility, I may also encourage you to do like heels elevated squats so that we can at least get really good deep squats uh, without you feeling the low back okay. pain. How long have you been working out total, Nick? Uh, this is my second time through anabolic, but the first time really where I was kind of consistent and disciplined with, you know, everything, the workouts, nutrition, okay. sleep, kind of the works. Okay. Um, lifted on and off for 10 years, but nothing, you know, it was kind of that deal three months on, you know, four months off, two months on, five months off. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, I would avoid the squat shoes for now. I think Adam gave great advice, but the problem, I, I still run into this, is I'll use the squat shoes. I'll be like, cool, I'm going to keep just squatting and <laughs> see how much weight I can lift. So I think symmetry is going to help the, the most. I really do. I think that'll be the best bet. And you're probably going to have to avoid bilateral movement for at least two or three months before you figure this out. Because if, if you just keep pushing your strength, you might get stronger, but this issue is going to get worse. This is what's going to happen. Yeah, this will take you beyond even where you got to your strength yes. cap, which is going to be good. So it, it may be a bit of a mental challenge for you to kind of now that you got these awesome strength gains to now kind of work on 
isolating, you know, specific limbs and, you know, really like addressing any kind of imbalance. But uh, overall, you're going to benefit from it tremendously. Well, if we're if we're right and that you do make good progress and you follow symmetry consistently all the way through, the end of the program is a yeah, five by five. five. By you'll five. know. So you're going to show you. So you're get, you'll get a chance to actually see, okay, I put all this work in for the last two months that the guys told me following this program. The last half of that program is uh, is bilateral. So you get to go squat, deadlift, and actually see how that's carried over into that. So hopefully if we do, if we do a good job yeah. programming, we're on point with what we're telling you. You should actually see yourself. Yeah, your you're strength. bracing well. You know, you're not your lower back isn't flaring up like it was before. Like that's those are the goals. Yeah, and I already know the answer to that anyway, Adam. We did do a good job program. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nick, we'll send you symmetry, okay? Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate it. I think where I was getting hung up was, uh, you know, it never really seemed to be pain, but man, it was a wicked pump with just yeah. stiffness that would yeah. kind of nag me for a few yeah, days. Exactly. So that that makes a lot of sense, yeah. man. I'm glad you guys. Yeah, you know, I, I get the same thing. Sure. Yeah, erector spinae just overuse. By the way, you're not on any anabolics or anything like that, right? Because those those can cause uh, weird back pumps. I've heard. No, nothing. All right, that's yeah. Then we were right. You're good. Cool. I appreciate you guys. You got it, brother. All right. Just had to say that. Where the, where the fuck does that come? Because from? Because you'll hear people talk about going on anabolic, oral anabolic steroids, and they'll be like, "Oh, I got this crazy low back pump. Oh, that's normal. Just keep working through it." Oh, and really? it would have been weird if that. he's like, "Actually," and we're like, "Hold on a second, bro. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sal's on all the floor. I was waiting so. for like some yeah. dumb dad joke to come after no, that. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I, was I was like, set him up for a dad joke. <laughs> yeah, I did. I was like, <laughs> "What is? What the fuck does that mean? Never yeah. heard anyone say that. You before. never heard that before? No. Yeah, dude. I don't. I mean, look. This is all like this." This is all hearsay, you know, like yeah, anecdote yeah, type sure, of shit. Sure, so sure. there's no science here. But anyway, no, but so, so yeah, I mean, unilateral work solves this issue for nine out of 10 people mm -hmm. because you really start to isolate what the hell's going on. And whether it's the ankle or the hip or both, you're going to see it when you do those unilateral exercises in map symmetry. Our next caller is Skylar from West Virginia. Hi, Skylar. How can, how can we help you? Hi, how are you? Good. Great. It's crazy for me to be introducing myself. I've listened for a while and heard so much about your guys' lives and your families. I feel like we're like best friends. So it's weird <laughs> for me to like be talking to you for the first time. We are. We um, are. We are friends. Yep. Um, I'll start off with a little bit of background and then go into my question. Uh, overall, the last two years, um, I've lost about 50 pounds, gone through a lot of different phases, and it hasn't always been linear, but overall that's where i am um about a year ago i felt like i plateaued a little bit um i started working with a coach it started off really well he put me on a meal plan and it was very more clean food focused um i was at a point where i was eating a lot of processed food and trying to fit protein in everywhere i could so my digestion was terrible um so the clean foods helped a, f a lot at first um started with that and then started implementing more cardio um which slowly increased and i'm now up to doing an hour of fasted cardio in the morning and 20 minutes post lift daily um and lifting six times a week um, i'm eating a good bit of food uh, about 1500 calories a day 150 grams of protein but less than 100 carbs um and my plan's very meal plan focused rather than macro focused um and i'm a numbers person so I'm kind of tracking my food on my own and he looks at my food journal. Um, and I didn't really realize it at first, but I, I think that it's very thermogenesis focused. Um, right now I'm dropping about 0.25 to a half pound a week, uh, which is okay and probably what I should shoot for. But at this point I'm in the gym for three hours a day and working like 65, 70 hours a week. So it it's tough for me. Um, Ideally, I'd like to get macro focused again so I can decrease some of the cardio. I'm just kind of lost on how to move forward. Um, I, I don't know if I keep the same food and slowly back out of the cardio or if I decrease. I'm just scared to put pounds on, but I'm also scared to increase more cardio or I just don't really know how to back out of it. Um, so I guess just looking for some guidance. Yeah. So okay. I see why the title of this question was "I'm breaking up with my coach." Though now. Yeah. Is that so? <laughs> so okay. You said so you said something interesting. You're, it's thermogenesis focused. Did, did your coach tell you that, or did you just say that? Uh, no, just kind of doing my own research. Okay. All have, right. 
come to find that out. That's yeah. a that's a buzzword. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Yeah. There's no thermogenesis. Okay. Yeah. Focus. So if you read anything that says uh, this is a thermogenesis focused diet or whatever, you know it's garbage. So don't don't worry okay. about that. Okay. So here's here's uh here are some red flags with certain coaches. Okay. Here's one big one. They have two buttons, and this is the two buttons that they use, no matter what. Uh, calories. Drop calories, more activity. Oh, you're not yeah. losing enough. Dro you know, right. Drop calories, right. more activity. Drop calories, yeah. more activity. And then you end up where you're at now, where you're like, uh, I'm working out a lot, and <laughs> I, I can't do any more. Where do I go from here? Mm -hmm. I'm stuck. And that's because you've been coached uh, the wrong way up until now. So the question is, what do you do from here? Um, I would... I would start by cutting the cardio down and keeping the diet the same. I think that would that would be where I would start. I would take your cardio, I'd cut it way down. An hour and 20 minutes most days is just, I mean, unless you love it, it's like your favorite thing in the world to do. It's brutal. Or, yeah, it's, it sucks. So I would do, I would cut it down by more than half or all of it. I would do traditional strength training, full body, three days a week, MAPS anabolic style. Keep your calories the same. Watch and see how you feel. After a few weeks, then I would try and do maybe like a, a reverse diet. Uh, your calories are thirteen to fifteen hundred a That's day. That's low. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Is that is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Yeah. I would reverse diet till you get yourself up to a number that you feel comfortable cutting from. Okay. So okay. whatever number you go up to, think to yourself: Can I cut from here and then stay at that cut calorie number and feel good? So that might be, you know, 23, 24, 2,500 calories. And then when you cut, you get closer to 2,000 calories. But right now, you're probably too low. I haven't met very many people who feel great eating 1,300 to 1,500 calories every single Not day. Not only that, we just saw her pictures right now. You have, you have good muscle mass on you. That's way too low for like you're 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 you said you're way right around one sixty one seventy five is that where you're at right now is that what you said I'm at one seventy five and would like to get to one sixty yeah um, but you're maintain. you're solid though I mean I'm looking at you like you're 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 not like a one seventy and really overweight how, person how tall you're one seventy you? and solid I can see it in your legs yeah how tall are you. Uh, five, 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 six. Yeah. Boy, weight is so um, misleading. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very misleading. I, I wouldn't you, you even- act, You look really good, by the way. Yeah. Right. I wouldn't even look at the scale so much. I would go by performance, maybe body fat test trends, because for someone like you, you've got good muscle mass. I wouldn't- See, most people would not would not have guessed- No. You would body not, weight. I didn't guess that she looked like that. I saw your weight, yeah. and then I saw your picture. I was like, oh, shit. You don't look like what I was assuming yeah. you look like. But I've so. worked with women like you who have just- They've got great muscle mass. They look like they're just phenomenal. And then they're heavier on the scale because they're like athletes, and it's great. And by the way, what Adam's talking about is we have a huge potential with your metabolism. Yeah. I you you would be the kind of person that would be able to reverse diet a thousand calories at some point yeah. higher than you're at now yeah, for sure and probably still cut yeah so I would go I would cut cardio I would focus on traditional strength training and then I would go reverse diet after you settle after that you're you're obviously doing a great job lifting so I don't I don't know if that's from good from the coach or the trainer or this is just a coach on the diet part or, or if you have experience lifting or like that I'm assuming you 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 obviously squat deadlift all the good movements. Yeah, I just, I worked out at Planet Fitness for a long time, um, but just switched gyms. So I've like fell in love with it again. I was getting a little bit bored, um, but my coach has just done my nutrition. Um, I tore my ACL in high school, so kind of had to lift and then got really into it after that. Were you an athlete? Yeah, multi-sport athlete. But then when I tore my ACL, could not. Called it. Um, so Called it. Called yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You got great. You got great genetics. Yeah, yeah. You know, you. you Thanks. Yeah. I'm shorter, so it helps. No, um, no, no, no. You got great genetics. You know, you know what, you know what, you know what you just did. Uh, you literally hammered your body to slow its metabolism down. Yeah, yeah. You're, You've got great genetics. You, you can go. You're, you're going to be able to reverse diet very successfully if you do it right. Just be okay with a little bit of the, the weight not maybe being right. Like, don't get hung up on the exact number on the scale right now, especially right now, uh, because because I can tell by your body type, you're probably going to put muscle on pretty quick. And so the scale could absolutely go up. Go off of how you feel and know that the goal, ultimate goal is let's get those calories up to the high 2000s. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm saying you should be 27, 2800 minimum calories, and then we can come back down from that. But you, yeah, you have massive potential. Do you have our reverse dieting guide? Do you know how to do this uh, reverse diet properly? 
I don't. Is that, do I like increase a hundred a week? What's the pace? I'll, we're, like? we're gonna send it to I'll you. send it to you. Yeah. It'll tell you what to do. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then, uh, give me a little insight on what your programming looks right now. So I can, so I can put you on one of ours. That's a little bit different. So we have a nice, a nice switch at, on adaptation. What are you doing right now? Okay. I ran anabolic and then aesthetic a couple times. Um, I love that one. I'm, I like being in the gym a lot. And since I was spending so much time there, the six day program was helpful for me. Um, how about maps anabolic advanced? How about that? Oh, anabolic advanced yeah. uh, would be good or even split. I, let's go maps anabolic advanced. Yeah, I like that. But cut the cardio. Okay. Immediately? Yeah, I would cut the keep your calories where they're at. Yeah. Cut the cut cut the cardio out completely. Switch to maps anabolic advanced. After a few weeks of settling into that, if everything feels good and you're like, okay, like I'm good, I'm getting stronger. I'm not seeing these re these massive swings in weight. Then I would start the reverse diet. Okay. Okay. Does that sound all right? Yeah, that makes sense. Keep, all right. Keep us updated too. Yeah. You look apprehensive. Are you scared? <laughs> <laughs> I, I am scared. I'm nervous. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a total change. It's what it's I normal. thought I would hear, but it's hard to like. All right. Yeah. Do Listen, I need do I need to put you in the forum so we're checking on you? you? Get some accountability there. For you? <laughs> I think I'm think the end goal for me is to cut to a point where I can run a prep and find a new coach and compete eventually. Um, but I feel like I need to get it under control myself. Yeah, you do. Yeah, okay. So you're in the forum. before you go that route. Okay, so you you would be a perfect person who would like reach out to me, like, Yo, Adam, I heard you coach clients for this. Like, would you get me ready for a show? I would do an assessment of what you're doing, and I'd say I won't let you pick a show yet. I'd say first. Yeah. You and I, with your muscle mass, your, where you're at, I would want you to be somewhere 2,800 calories plus eating at maintenance before I put you through some sort of a 12-week cut for a bikini show or something because yeah. I know what that takes in order to do that. And I, the, what we're going to have, you're too low of calories to do anything with that right now. So we need to focus on right. building that metabolism right now. Yeah. And, and then you'd be in a healthy place. So yeah, you're gonna that should be your goal before you decide you're going to sign up for a bikini test. Make that promise and commitment to me that you should be able to maintain at 26, 2800 calories a day and not see your weight go up or down really that's a good place to be yeah so i know you're scared you said earlier that you trust us and we're <laughs> friends so trust your friends we're telling you what to do just do it and you're going to end up in a great place okay so cut the cardio like no cardio yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah like, like walk walking's Sign fine right. you know stay active throughout the day okay i don't want you to just like do nothing uh okay. walking's fine throughout the day you know if you want to track your steps that's fine eight to twelve thousand steps a day but just cut the cardio out. How, cut the cardio out. Maps anabolic advance. Keep your calories the same. After three weeks or so, if everything feels stable, start the reverse diet. How, how intense was the fasted cardio in the morning? Was it walking, or were you actually getting after it? Elliptical at like one fifty. Okay, so you're kind of getting after it. Yeah. Um, will you? And then I typically do stairmaster or incline walk okay. after my lift. Okay. But. Yeah. So you're getting okay. So are you? Are you? Will you still wake up at the same time if I tell you you don't have to do that? Because here's my one concern: is if I tell you to eliminate all the cardio, mm -hmm. and you now sleep it's in that hour, hour and a half, exchange, yeah. that's a big shift in in calorie difference. So, will are you not going to get up that early anymore? If I tell um, you? I could probably sleep in an extra hour. Well, hold on. If, do you, do yeah. you need the extra sleep? Um, I I wake up at four, go to bed at not. I not. I get seven hours. Yeah, no, no, no. Do the sleep. Yeah, go ahead and sleep in. You're fine. You go to bed at nine, ten. Wake up at four. Yeah, get some sleep. You know what's funny? I about, could wake up at five. Yeah, you know what's funny about this is you're you've got such great genetics that with the shitty programming that you're on and the ridiculous amount of cardio and low calories, you've actually been able to keep like amazing muscle. So you actually, if I had you, like if you came to me and hired me. And I talked to you about all this and I saw this, I'd be like, I'd be rubbing my hands together like, oh, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> She's going to respond really, really well because you shouldn't even be able to have muscle right now with what you're doing. Yeah, it, it started slowly, so I didn't really notice. And then it just kept going up and up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Do what we say. Check yeah. in, okay. with, check in with us in the forum. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. You got yes. it. All right. You know what's funny? Someone like her would get so abused in the in the competing space because oh, yeah. a coach could just fucking just hammer throttle her. Throttle down. Yeah. And she yeah. would do okay because her body's able to hold on to some muscle. she got all that muscle. I know. Me. My I know. one concern, though, is to, if you eliminate all that cardio that she was doing, 
and and you also sleep in an extra hour and a half, that's a huge shift in in calories. Oh, but if her body needed it, if it's uh, recovered, if it's all that, yeah. But that's a big switching off. So I mean, she's in the forum, so we're gonna get a chance yeah. to. But that if there if she if she has a hard time at all, or she sees a, a, a dramatic shift in her weight going right, up, right? The, we, we would have to do. I'd counter it with some walking throughout the day, right? Right. So that's what I would do. Is I'd actually probably ask her to monitor her steps, and so I had an idea of like what. This, how much movement she's getting in the day, and then I'd find ways to mm -hmm. incorporate it throughout her day in walking, so she doesn't have this dramatic like right. you know five hundred to eight hundred calorie shift a day in burn. You know, even though she probably needs to sleep, even though her body needs to relax a little bit, she doesn't need to be pushing that hard. That overnight switch could cause a little bit of weight gain. It, it right could, away. but if she stabilizes, reverse diet. But you know, here's the other side of it too that sometimes happens uh, is that your her body has just become so efficient that when she cuts the cardio out, lets her body recover, her metabolism just speeds up because it doesn't feel like it needs to be so thrifty. So for the first week or so, calorie surplus. After that, ooh, now the body She's starts fully recovered. Yeah, and building now, and she'll yeah. see herself get stronger, feel more rested, and all that stuff. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, after we'll a few, see. yeah, and that's 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 a good call. Put her in the forum. I think that'll be good to watch. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with fitness, health, fat loss, and muscle building. You can also find all of us on social media. Uh, Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram at Mind Pump Stefano, and Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 